Good evening. This is Jared Wren. Welcome, everyone, to the 9 p.m. Eastern uh, Time for Change call, Q&A, Part 2. And uh, looking at the uh, different strangeness going on around the planet and things happening, I, you know, it would be, wouldn't it be nice if you could just wave your hand and close the curtain on the movie and and so all of us could get busy doing the repair and clean up of all the damage that's taken place one thing is is to take a look at uh, the awareness of uh, the current planetary condition which is really not talked about much it's not discussed much and it's really not brought out in the open so the, I, I believe that the majority of inhabitants of planet earth are in the dark a lot about the current status of the environment and the atmosphere and the ecosystem and the oceans and the you know, when when, we, when you're aware of something and you're you get knowledge on it, then you have a better understanding of how to fix it or repair it, because you, you literally have to know what the status is of something. Um, you know, it'd be like going in and not knowing anything about an automobile, and then someone say, "Well, can you fix this?" You wouldn't have a clue on know how to fix it or what what the problem was with it and why it wasn't running. Um, but when we look at our atmosphere and the ozone and depletion of the ozone and then the solar system with the planets that we that were informed of planets that you know, everybody has grown up with but there's many more planets uh, above in our solar system that they you know just don't discuss or bring out in the open and then you look at the changes on this planet and what's happening and taking place now there's a real interesting twist uh, throughout history that is continually played over and over again and you have to be very you know you got to be pretty quick to pick it up because it's really subtle and, and I've you know I've kind of talked about this before but if you look and throughout history and be beyond the history that you're told you, know, you research and go here and go there and you hear about or read about that you know so many years ago you know or so many decades ago or so many centuries ago you know we had this and this was going to happen and that was going to happen and this was going to happen and it was always portrayed as just cataclysmic total destruction you know on the planet and that you know everybody might as well forget it because the end of the world's coming and it's all over well when you feel that vibration when you when you understand it or when you come across people that discuss and port you know talk about things that every single thing they talk about is the end the doom and gloom and prepare for the worst and and, and and you know it's a constant barrage of negative you know just constantly negative and I don't think these people are aware of it to the most part because they're trying to inform the public and trying to help in their own way but what what we're looking at is is that if you're aware of the basics and the condition of the planet, that's, it's, if you're aware of it, if you know that the, the, the oceans are dying, okay, so we fix the oceans that are dying, uh, and the ozone layer has been depleted greatly, okay, so we know that, so we're going to fix we're going to fix that. The soil on the planet is uh, greatly uh, compromised because of all of the chemicals that have been infused into it calcium has been reduced in the ground layers in which calcium basically holds things together keeps them from collapsing and 
So we fix that. It, it, these are just simple things that we can look at as a civilization and say, okay, so we can fix that. And not necessarily having to go into crucial details of horribleness and all kinds of stuff and negativity. And the, and the danger in that is that it influences the energies. It, it, when, when you listen to something, and I'm sure you can tell this, when you listen you know, to music that might be disturbing it. You know, some music is disturbing. It's not, it's not pleasant. Um, or you get around something that is just rubs you the wrong way or you, know, you're, you, you just you don't vibrate well with it. It's just a bad energy, I guess is the best way to put it. We get around bad energies. We get around energies that we, we really, you know, you don't care to listen to. You're not interested in it. We We know that we have a let's put it this way, we have a show that plays every day, right? And it's a movie theater. And you really don't need tickets to it because it's always running. It's always playing. And whoever wants to can watch and witness the trans, how it uh, operates, how things happen and how the characters interact. Well, when we see the veil or the deception and we look at everything and we pick it up we say okay fine we right now right now as, as i'm talking we have a uh, a monetary system on this planet that's just absolutely pathetic okay and it really doesn't take rocket scientists to figure that out it is all corrupt it's corrupt to the bone okay and it's been designed that way and it's been designed to rob and rape and pillage the people of the planet forever. You know, not, there's, there's no expiration date on this monetary system. Okay? And a lot of us who have you know, kind of looked at it uh, without having to go to banking school and all of that and start understanding how it works, you know, what, what, the bankers design a system where every loan that they uh, put out they get 95% off the top. And it's and imagine creating a system that has no and it doesn't have a value. It doesn't have a value. It just doesn't, okay? People argue that well, you know, it does have a value. No, it's just a belief mechanism. You just believe in it and and they run the whole system so you believe in that that it can well I I can take a $20 bill and I can buy things. It's because everybody is dictated to and follows the lead of the corrupt banking system. So what happens is, is that you, you know, basically you believe in it, you use the money, and as long as you can buy things, that's fine. But you imagine you, you, you go out, and, and they go out and they buy wealth, hard asset wealth, like gold, silver, and diamonds, you know, gems, and, you know, real estate, and all of that, with funny money, monopoly money. Isn't that amazing? You design a system, and then you can print all all the currency you want forever and ever and ever, and then you can dictate to the planet and who do, goes where and who does what and who gets what, and then those that don't want to play the game are threatened or war descends upon that little country and their currencies are devalued to ridiculous low levels, and their governments are destroyed and puppet governments are put in. So... We, we see that. We've experienced it. All of us have experienced it one way, shape, form, or another. You know, we have. And we don't like it. Okay? It's not something that we feel helps humanity. It does not do good things for humanity. It, it separates humanity. It, 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 it takes us away from each other. Uh, it it segregates humanity. It puts and it pits humanity uh, at each other. It, you know, the, the humanity is kind of like at, at wit's end most of the time. And, and that's the majority, okay, because the minority are the ones that handle the uh, finances of the planet. Now, if you look at all of the finances that you're aware of, and you put two and two together, which they don't want you to do. They don't want you to figure it out. They want you to be confused all the time. 
And believe me, with all of the information that flows out there, all of the stuff that goes on out there, it, it's no wonder everybody's so confused. That you know, you've got this person saying this, and you've got this person saying this, and you've got this person saying this, and <clears throat> for the most part, most of what they say isn't true, and then some of it is true, and their ability to follow through with what they say they can do is almost nil. It doesn't happen. In our society today, people can just say whatever they want, and people are supposed to believe them. And you, ha- what we have is we, we know that we need a new, a new financial system. And we need a financial system that we can manage and that works well for the time being and equalizes the wealth on the planet. Now, I have read thousands of project, uh, literal humanitarian projects, people that have put the, put together these projects. They've uh, spent a lot of time on them. There's people that have spent years and years and years uh, trying to get these projects funded. In one way, shape, or form or another, they've been cut off, and you know, all kinds of just calamities have befallen them. So, you know, the sincerity out there for the lot of people is very deep sincerity on assisting. So when we look at the how, you know, how does everybody get financially um, well? How does that happen? Well, if you look at the, and I'm not talking about, um, I'm not talking about paper currency. I'm not talking about paper currency, anything like that. I'm talking about hard asset wealth. I'm talking about uh, gold, silver, precious uh, gems, and um, platinum, and all the metals, all the things that in, in our civilization we feel are valuable and have have a value to them. Obviously, gold and silver do. Platinum does. And, and we think about throughout thousands and thousands of years. You, know, you have, the, and I was just in a conversation about this earlier today. Uh, and you, you, you start to think about you know, tens of 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000. And believe me, there were civilizations, advanced civilizations on this planet 100,000 years ago. Uh, and these are uh, beings from other planets. That's what that's basically. And there's a lot of beings from other planets on Earth now. They're all over the place. And most of them are very nice people. Uh, and, and, you know, when you look at them, you, they, you couldn't tell that they're any different than we are for the most part. And when you become aware, we did a meditation on awareness, when you become more and more clear and aware, you'll start noticing that. You really will. And it won't be your imagination. And when we look at where we can go with this wealth, and this wealth, hard asset wealth, has been stored on this planet by elders, by keepers, by family dynasties. Uh, and, and I'm not talking about stolen wealth. I'm talking about wealth that's just been hidden away, has just been kept hidden away. And, you know, I, when you see wealth, when you see it, and, and what is it, what is it? You know, it's just material things. And... To me, wealth is, 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 is wonderful health and happiness. That's wealth. That's true wealth. And so when you, when you see this wealth, you see boxes and boxes and boxes and chests. And as far as the eye can see, gold and silver and gems and just anything you can think of literally for just 
I guess as far as the eye can see, underground and hidden here and hidden there. And so you have this wealth, and those that watch over it just leave it there and keep it protected. And it never does anything for humanity. Think about this now. It never does anything for humanity. And no matter how it's structured or put together, no matter where it's at, no matter how it's protected, no matter who is the uh, landlord of the money, okay, of the, of the wealth, it never literally helps humanity. And I'm talking about across the board of helping the entire human race. It never gets out there. There's always an interrupt. There's always an obstacle. You know, there's always bad guys trying to steal it. There's always something that stops it from flowing freely. They think about that, okay? So if you had the opportunity, if any of you had the opportunity to release all the wealth all to all the people on the planet, you'd have to have a plan, say, and when you didn't, if you, if you weren't involved in the plan and you weren't involved in what the actual plan was, because there are several plans, okay? So if, if you didn't understand the big picture and you, you, you weren't involved with the design and architecture of the big picture for humanity, then you'd be confused because you would, you'd get impatient, you'd get concerned, you'd get irritated. Uh, you'd start questioning and doubting because of the fact that, you know, nothing for, as far as wealth, think about this, as far as wealth, as long as you have lived, doesn't matter if you're 100, 110, 120, or you're uh, 30, 35, uh, 25, whatever, but as long as you've lived, have you ever seen any government Give wealth to the people. Have you ever seen any government stop taxation of the people? All right? Have you ever seen a government pour the money into the people? All right? Obviously, the answer is no. So there has to be a new, uh, a different direction for humanity where funds are distributed in a way through, you know, jobs, uh, different participation in uh, the manufacturing or the distribution of technologies, uh, of helping each other, aiding each other, uh, and going in that direction. Because what you give out, okay, you, you get in return what you give out. So if you get somebody, now think about this one. If you have a group of, it, it, of, of beings, I'll just put it that way, that control all the money and usually have all the money and have all the control of the money all right, on the planet. And all they do is hoard the money. And they keep it secret what they do with some of the money from the people. And, but they hoard it and hoard it and hoard it. You know, this person's worth uh, 10 trillion. This person's worth 500 trillion. I mean, the Rothschilds are worth hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of trillions of dollars. What do they do with it? Do they help humanity? No, they don't. They don't, period. All right. The Warburgs and all the rest of these families that operate on the planet, do they help humanity? No, they don't. They give humanity cracker crumbs. And so humanity survives. And, the, and, and humanity becomes their pawns in their game and are herded in different directions and through the media and then through the, 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 the television and computers and smartphones and all that stuff. They're guided and herded and, and, and basically distracted and deceived. So we know all this stuff. So, so what's the solution to it? Well, the solution is, is to have the wealth distributed to the people. Now, there's only one power that can do that. There's only one. doesn't matter, you know, where the, where the intentions are with some people on distributing the wealth on the planet. 
they've all failed, all right? And they continue to fail, the ones that have good hearts and want to distribute the wealth to the human race. And they, and they fail. And it's very frustrating for them, and they keep trying and keep trying and keep trying, but they, they never seem to get anywhere. So God, prime source creator God, Father, Mother God, our source creator, is the only energy and power that can distribute the wealth to humanity. See? It's the only way. So the wealth through God creation, because all wealth is God created. Humanity doesn't create wealth. We're already wealthy when we come into these bodies. Believe it or not, we are. It's just that we're taught immediately that we aren't. So that after so long a period of time, we believe we aren't. So we send out signals that keep us lack of mentality all the time, fearful and lack of. I'll guarantee you that the majority of human beings every day worry about lack of. They worry about lack of money, lack of food, lack of shelter. And a lot of people in this country worry about it every day. One of those three things they worry about, lack of, of good health. Those are just another one. And it's a, it's a daily event of worrying and stressing about that, which means they get more and more and more and more and more of it on a pretty much daily basis. Now, you could have unlimited wealth available to use. If you did not have wonderful health, the, the, uh, uh, the wealth would be nothing. It would do nothing for you. See? And you didn't know where to go and what to do about it. And that's most people. So they go to a corrupt allopathic system that's been installed on the planet, meant to just treat you and make money off of you. Period. That's it. When, when, a, um, when, a, when a person is diagnosed, when a human is diagnosed with cancer, the doctor makes a half a million on that person all said and done. Okay. And, and that is just the beginning of it all. And don't need to go into detail because you can look that up for yourself and research it and, and dig it up. But these are things that we look at and we address and we say we've got to fix that. All right? Now, wealth is meant to be distributed equally amongst humanity. That's the way it's always been. Okay? Now, we're all wealthy vessels, our God sparks are wealthy. We're all abundant. It's it's what what it's what we're about. It's it's everything. We are, we are eternal love. We are pure abundance. We are uh, wealthy. Okay. Now people say, yeah, well, you couldn't see that by looking at people and what the stress the stresses and everything and the challenges they go through. But when you you you, you step out, you step outside that movie that show, and you start realizing that. How can that be? How can that be? Distribution, equal distribution of wealth to the human race. Well, when we start understanding that we pick up the slack that God has given us to assist in formulating and creating the doors that open up to let that wealth pour forth. Okay? Now, humanity is notoriously known for lack of patience because they aren't informed, aren't educated, and on purpose. So things are kept from them. So if we look at the condition appear, the appearance of the condition of all these countries that that uh, the media claims are going under and they're you know, their economies are in trouble and their, you know, the, the Chinese economy is going down the toilet and, you know, we've got all of this stress on all these different countries, and Venezuela and Ecuador and all over the planet that we have all this strife going on. Now, wouldn't it be, and, and this is about our feeling, our energy, our thought energy, 
Wouldn't it be interesting to say that we want all of humanity to be wealthy, right? We want them to be wealthy from the standpoint of they have clean housing, they have clean clothes, they have clean organic food, they have clean air and clean water. They have no debt. Their health is, they have great health. Now, if you have all of those basics, you're pretty much happy. Because you're, and and they don't worry about uh, uh, lack of, see? Because when you worry about lack of, you get more lack of. It's a common, it's common. It's just a fact. When you look at that, (coughs) excuse me, you have this, this common understanding and it test it. You, you know, I'm sure that some of you have experienced it where you see people that are always down and out and they're always talking about, you know, they don't have, they can't afford this, they can't afford that, they can't afford this, they can't afford that, they don't have enough money for this, they don't have enough money for that. And they spend most of their energy in that discipline of lack of. And we've all, either we've been in it or, or a lot of other people that we've experienced have been in it. And we've all experienced it one shape, form, or another through our lifetimes, for the most part. Now, very wealthy people worry about losing all the time. They worry about losing their money. They worry about losing it. They worry about losing it, and they worry more about losing it, and that's basically it. That's why it gets, can get to a fever where they never have enough of it, and their ego needs to be stroked. And see, the ego never is satisfied. The ego always wants more. That's one thing about the That's one of many things about the ego that, that we... Uh, kind of ignore, but the ego never gets enough. It's never satisfied, so it always wants more. So if you let the ego control you, which a lot of these folks do, they end up they end up hoarding money, and they never do good with anybody. They never help humanity. They never help their communities. They really don't. They just keep it to themselves, and they hoard it. So that mentality, going into the new paradigm, won't won't last. It can't function. It's about moving money. Money is supposed to be fluid, and it's supposed to be constantly in motion, constantly moving. That's the way it was designed. That's originally the way it was designed. So it goes, and it moves, and it takes care of things. And and, and right now we have a financial structure, and and we use money. That's not going to be the case forever. And so right now we use money, but we use money to help each other. We use money to make sure that this group of people is well taken care of. This group of people is well taken care of. And imagine that the entire planet has one card starting off as universal health. And that and there's an there's an account that that, that all those cards are draw that, that draw off of that is totally protected. Cannot be breached, cannot be stolen, cannot be uh, uh, criminalized or anything, period because of the way it's designed. So everybody has a card, and they, and, and they have dental, optical, they've got full medical, no, con, no contribution, uh, no copay, none of that stuff. It's just carte blanche anywhere on the planet. Now imagine, and, and it, you know, it'll pay for naturopathic treatments, it'll pay for uh, Ayurvedic, it'll pay for acupuncture, it'll pay for... Uh, oriental medicine, alternative medicines, alternative avenues. It'll pay for stem cell therapy. It'll pay for reverse aging therapy. It'll pay for all of that stuff, period. Supplements, whatever it is. If it's for the body, it will pay for it. Now, thinking in these directions, oh, that's, that's, see, and what will happen is a government will tell the people, that's crazy, that can't be done, it can't be funded, we don't have that kind of money, forget about it, you're dreaming, right? So everybody goes away and the crowd disperses and forget about it. Why forget about something that is so beneficial? Right? The the Ameri- just in our country, the American people generate enough wealth for everybody in this country to be wealthy. That's the truth. And and, and I've said this. It's true. And to th- and to start. Looking at that, visualizing it, believing in that, it can be done. It can be carried out. It can be done. If enough of humanity starts understanding that in order to change things, 
it is up to us. Okay? It's not up to a white horse in the clouds. It is up to us to change things. That's what our creator designed us to do, is to change things. What do we want to change? We can change anything, anything, anything we choose. But see, we, you know, as I've done in the, in the meditations, and we've talked a lot about the meditations, is that you have to become aware of your power. Not only aware of it, but embrace it. Also have confidence, not ego, not the ego confidence, but the confidence. You're, you're, you, you're, you yourself and your higher self reassures you that this is real, that this, is a, this can be accomplished, and it can be done. Now imagine if you design something that occupies people that causes them not to do anything. Think about that. People just wait around, wait around, wait around, wait around, wait, wait around, and they just wait around. What are you doing? I'm waiting around. I'm waiting for this, or I'm waiting for that. And you've heard it. We've all, we're all, we, we've all done that with something or another, waiting for this. I'm waiting for that. And you ever notice that when you wait for something, most of the time it never comes. It's just, you just wait. And as you wait, you become more flustered, more frustrated. You, you, you dip into the negativity, the anger, the stress, the impatience. It all kicks in, and it lowers your vibrational frequency, and you go down, and you drop down. And the more you drop down, the more you're thinking in these areas. Then fear. Fear and anxiety kick in, and stress factors come in. And you start doubting things, and you start disbelieving things. And it's, all this stuff comes in. Now, imagine spending our energies on creating things that are going to alleviate all of this, period. Now, now people say, well, that's crazy. How are you going to do that? Well, you start off with yourself, and you start off concentrating on how you can stay happy, all right, or how you can get to a level of happy. Happy is inside of you. So, and this is, this, to some people it sounds looney tunes and crazy, but it is right on the money because of the fact that if anybody practices that, if they practice lifting themselves up, being in a joyful life, a joyful existence, things around them change. Remember I've said that one human can affect up to a million humans through meditation. All right? Now, so one human can affect that many humans through, up to that many humans through meditation. Then what's stopping each and every human from affecting change across the planet and throughout our country? See, people want this, and they want this, and I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. But have you ever noticed how many people don't do anything to attract it? They don't do anything to attract it. Okay? And when, when, you, real, when you start to understand that, and, and there's people waiting around, okay? There was a commercial long time ago, I think it, it, it really sent a message. The commercial was there was a bunch of gals in towels standing around a uh, community sink in a, a laboratory, in a bathroom. And they were all sitting there staring at this water gushing out of this sink. And all of them, we were just watching it just gush out. None of them did anything to turn it off. So this one gal just comes up and turns it off, walks away. The rest of them look in amazement to each other. See? That kind of uh, energy is pretty prevalent on the planet. It's because if you don't have confidence and you become lethargic, and you've been tricked into a system that enables you and, and, and causes you and kind of shuts you down to not be active, proactive. And so, and I'm talking about 
with yourself. All right? That's where it begins. It starts with you, and then it builds. Okay? Just remember the one, one human being can affect up to a million people in meditation when they meditate. That's astronomical. Okay? Now, we're, we're, we're that powerful with our feelings and our thoughts. So it's just directing them in the right direction. What's the right direction? Everybody's wealthy. Everybody's happy. Everybody's healthy. It is mind-boggling. I, I mean, if you could, the, the amount of people that are sick and ill and dying on this planet is astronomical. Okay? And if, if, every, if people rely on leaders and governments to do this stuff, do you think it's going to get done? Has it ever been done? No, it hasn't. So doing the same things over and over and over again and expecting different results, it's not going to happen. You're going to get the same thing over and over again by doing the same thing over and over again. It's not going to change. We have the same governments over and over again doing the same thing over and over again, and nothing ever changes. That's across the planet. Now, how do we change that? It's with our thought and our feelings, our heart and our, and our, and our thinking through our crown chakra to change that direction, increase the vibrational frequency of the energies of the planet and humanity. That's, that's the way to do it. Now, literally, think about this. Why don't we have millions of of Americans and people, basically people around the, around the planet meditating all together. Why don't we? What's, why is that? Okay. What is the main reason for that, that that's not happening? Okay. When everything else we've witnessed in our lives, most of it doesn't work. We've got pollution, un- uncontrollable pollution. We've got ecosystem breakdown. We've got ec- mass extinctions going on. I mean, these are realities that are happening. And because they don't affect directly people in certain parts of the, of the world, they're not concerned about it because it's not affecting them. Okay. When you become detached from nature... You lose a part of yourself. When you do not connect with nature, there, we don't connect to nature. We, we, don't, we don't even connect with each other. We've allowed, and, and let's, we're just going to shift over to AI, artificial intelligence. Now, artificial intelligence is created and artificial intelligence is a, uh, a system of beginning with computers, electronics, and processing, and more powerful processing, and diodes, and wave patterns, and wavelengths, and physics all kind of whipped together in a, in a pudding. And... As, as you give more and more energy to that artificial intelligence, it begins to get its own conscience, its own consciousness. Once that happens, it can think for itself. Once it can think for itself, it begins to believe that it is perfection and you are not. A long time ago, one of my calls, I talked about this, is that the artificial intelligence comes into different parts of the universe. It's all, it, it, it is out there. And what it does is, is it, it seduces the population of the planet into elect, elect, things that, like smartphones and all this other stuff and being able to talk to Sirius and, uh, and uh, uh, Alexa and all this stuff. It, it's just, you know, it's how it's just seeping in everywhere. Oh, this is cute. This is great. This is wonderful. All i got to do is ask it and do it. Now, see... Now, it, on one hand, it, it seduces everybody because, oh, this is great, this is wonderful. But it keeps advancing, it keeps advancing, it keeps advancing. And the powers of the planet, 
they have these super AI computers, and they keep getting more advanced, more advanced, more advanced, more advanced. And it's not too far-fetched from the movie Terminator, right? You get to a point where you release a software program that becomes self-aware. And once it becomes self-aware, you become the target. That's, that's a, that literally is what happens. So, you know, all of a sudden, that which, it, what, that which created it becomes its enemy. Because we no longer are perfect in its eyes. So when you think about this AI, and you, you, know, and you, you welcome it because it's, it, it eases your jobs and it, it, it alleviates things and it does things for you and it's wonderful, and, and the less and less you become in control of anything. I mean, think about that. See? And it's seducing. And, a, and after a while, you are relying on everything that's artificial intelligence. All you got to do is talk, and the lights come on. All you got to do is talk, and this comes on. All you got to do is talk, your car comes on. All you got to do is say this, and you go here, and you do this, and you do that. It's just all there. Everything becomes autonomous, all controlled by one artificial intelligence, masterminding, controlling everything on the planet. Okay? In other words, the, the artificial intelligence knows where you're at, knows what you're doing 24-7, knows what you eat, knows, knows what you wear, knows your physical ailments, knows your weaknesses, knows your genetic makeup, knows everything, period. More than your spouse knows. More than anybody knows. So you've got, you've got no sacredness, you've got no privacy, you've got, it's all gone. It's all gone. You're totally controlled. Your, your wealth is totally controlled completely. You don't even have an opportunity to do anything. You, you literally are dictated to. And you, can't, you, you don't have any way to, to overcome that because it's everywhere. See? It's everywhere. And when you realize this and you see all this stuff, then you say, well, you know what? I can change this and I can change that. And I don't have to do this and I don't have to do that. And it's true. You don't. See? I mean, AI is good to a certain extent, then it stops. It should stop there, period. Humanity was meant to be creative, create things, do things with their hands, and create and envision and, you know, uh, expand and explore. We were not meant to sit in little hoover scooters and get really obese and fat while all the AI is doing is servicing us constantly with robots and everything else. And we become so detached we lose all of our skills and all of our abilities to do things, and we literally become totally dependent on AI. That's the game plan. Okay? There's a massive AI that is, it's like an octopus, and it comes, it, it literally encircles itself around the planet, and it starts controlling everything. And it blends it in, and it introduces this, and introduces this technology, and introduces it. And, and that entity is called Yaldabaoth, and it is a artificial intelligence, and no one seems to know where it ever came, where it ever came from, but it, what it does is it infects, it's an infection. It comes in and invades certain parts of galaxies and planetary systems, and then it seduces. I mean, AI destroyed Mars, if you really want to get to nitty-gritty. It, it destroyed the atmosphere, and it destroyed the surface of the planet because of the technology that the inhabitants developed. It's part of, you, you, you're always going to use AI to develop certain technologies because that's what happens. You go into computers, you go into these different technologies, these different applications, and you end up developing an artificial intelligence to assist in high-tech development of whether it be weapons, any kind of systems, any control mechanisms. It's connected to AI. So when I say that different planets have been destroyed by artificial intelligence, I don't mean that artificial intelligence comes down and zaps the planet. I mean that it does it through the inhabitants and infiltrates them. We are, ne we, we are one of millions of civilizations that have been infected by AI. Okay? And, but it, 
it seduces everyone because it makes things easier. Things appear easier. They're easier to do. They're easier to run, so on and so forth. All I've got to do is tell it, and it'll do it. So we have to be aware of these things in order to go beyond, to know where we're headed, to be aware of these influences, which is to have the knowledge of these influences. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to have that knowledge. You just say, okay, I'm aware of this now. That's great. That's a positive thing. Okay? I am mindful of what I decide to use because you decide to use it. No one else does yet. And I say that yet. No one else does yet. So as we expand our awareness and our knowledge and we become proactive with ourselves first, we wake up, we expand. We see things with awareness, with clarity. We're not critical and we're not hypocritical. We stand back like wise humans and we take it in and we watch and we look and we see. How can we change this for the betterment of all? All right. So when Prime Source Creator God's wealth is released to humanity, okay, and I remember I've talked about there's 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 different revalves going on. It's a big game. It's a big game. There are all these different factions vying for control of planet Earth. That's exactly what's going on. And you, everybody gets confused because there's so many different a- areas and avenues of all these different factions of this one wants to do this type of thing for humanity. Now, I'm not giving you the opportunity to, to decide for yourselves, but just to dictate, again, another situation where everybody's being told this is how it's going to be. Okay? And how can any population or civilization grow and mature if they're constantly kept in the dark and lied to all the time. How can, the, how can you advance? How? It's not possible. You just, you, you, everybody just stays and is controlled and is lied to, deceived, and manipulated. That's, you can't grow that way. You can't mature that way. See? And so when you look at the avenue of all these different all these different families and secret societies and you know all of them all just who's going to who's going to win who's going to get the magic star the gold star on the board to to to, to uh, basically run the world run the planet okay well nobody has yet okay because humanity is very naive. The reason they're naive is that they get carried away with these technologies and stuff like this massive space fleet that they've created out in space. And they have. It's been there for years, decades. And they suck the money out of the surface population to pay for it. That's basically what they do. And they've been doing that for years and years and years. Super advanced technologies. We're, you know, and then they, they interact with other other world beings, other planet pe- beings from other planets. It's like BFOP, beings from other planets. So beings from other planets, and they interact with them. They've worked with a lot of different civilizations through the years. Okay? And just think about that. But the surface population doesn't really know what really is going on out there. Why do we have rockets and why do we have combustible engines and why do we have such archaic technologies that really just pollute and take up natural resources? Doesn't make sense. We've been we just keep using them. That's we don't stop. They never they never really advance. They just stay the same. They get a little bit more powerful. You know, the same with automobiles and all the rest of the stuff. Okay. Electricity is absolutely ludicrous. It's so old and antiquated to, to run vehicles around and everything. You know, we've we, we've got plasma drive units. We've got cold fusion. We've got anti-gravitic drive. We've got free energy 
that you can hook up right now today, and they stop every way they can to stop humanity from getting it. Anybody that tries to get it out and distribute it is killed. Plants are blown up. Stashes are destroyed. I mean, it goes on and on and on. I, I'll give you an example. One inventor that I knew years and years ago had invented an engine, okay, that could literally run forever. It never needed fuel. And the engine, he was able to, to get a pole barn, and he had, like, I don't know how many of these engines actually built. And he got a group of friends together, some engineers and stuff, and they manufactured these by hand. And they, were get, they wanted to get them out there. They wanted to get them out to the human race. One night he had all these engines ready to go, and he was going to introduce it. And then one, he went to bed. The engine, the, 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 the pole barn was burnt to the ground, and the, the fire was so hot that the engines were melted down into pools. That's it. Okay. He stopped working on that technology, and he started inventing crazy stuff just to make money, games and things, and, you know, with the Chinese and stuff. And he just scared the living daylights out of them. So a lot of these things go on behind the scenes. That's why a lot of that's why we don't have these technologies right now. That's why we aren't using them. That's why we don't have the replicators yet because of the, the, the baddies that will try to do anything to stop us from having them. See? That's why we don't have them. That's why we don't have the med beds. You know? And it, it's really interesting. You know, people say, well, there's med beds here now and they're using them. All right? Well, I'd like to know what kind of med bed that is because it sure as heck isn't a plasma med bed. Plasma energy. Reatomization. All right. So, uh, and if they are using them, then they aren't the good guys. If they really do have some form of a technology med bed that they're using, that they aren't good guys. All right. Because if they were good guys, these things would be popping up everywhere. All right. To see the purpose of this wealth is to make it so everybody is well off, so we don't need it anymore. That's the goal. That's the goal. Okay. Humanity doesn't do well with wealth. That's my opinion, because if you look at things and you look at history, it pretty much proves out that that's the case. Okay? Because, what, with what, interesting enough, with wealth, the bad guys always have the wealth, and the good guys always sit there and are struggling. You know, most, most donations come from people that are barely getting by. See, that's because of their hearts and because of who they are. And that's where most donations come from, for any purpose, any reason. You don't see mega, mega billionaires giving money away freely. Okay? You don't say, you know what? Okay? And this should be happening all over the country with the, with the amount of millionaires and billionaires in this country alone. Walking into a grocery store and say, hey, I want to pay for everybody's groceries for the whole day. Next 24 hours, boom, okay? Uh, or, uh, hey, I, I, I want to pay uh, uh, the next year of tuition for all your students, boom, okay? And I'm talking about very wealthy people, so it's, it's, it's a drop in the bucket. Well, you know, like that's the Rothschilds. They take, a, take about $50 trillion and, 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 and eliminate poverty and eliminate starvation on the planet. See, that's what I'm talking about. Money should be given to help and assist the betterment of humanity. That's what it's for. It's not about getting about 20 cars and 50 houses and, you know, yachts and all this stuff. That's crazy. It's crazy. So we, we, we look at this and we view it and say, this is, you know, that's the, that's the landscape. It's going to change. It already is changing. Things are going to shift. They already are shifting. And as we continue to expand, as the meditations following of people that are participating expand, like I said, we're going to eventually, we're going to hit a million, 
And I guess what we'll do is that when we get to a just massive number of people, we're going to either have to record it, uh, hire a, an accounting firm to verify, confirm, take pictures, whatever needs to be done to make sure that we can archive the amount of people that we have participating in these meditations. And even then, people will doubt. Even then, they'll question it. I mean, creator, prime source creator God could come down and say, this is how many people are meditating. They would say, well, who are you? Are you a magician? You're not, you're not really him. You're not really the creator. Say, see, this, the, the cynicism and the skepticism, the, the lack of belief. That's, the reason the lack of belief there is because most people don't believe in themselves. They don't believe in themselves. If they did, they would be content. They would be peaceful. That's what that's how it would be. So uh, we'll a few minutes here we'll go to the Q and A and what we're gonna do with the Q and A is that we'll um, if we have any disruption I will block that person from coming I will knock them off and I will block them from coming back onto the call. There's no excuse for people. You know, be cognizant of the fact that when you push star six, okay, and we start hearing noise, and if you look in your background area, if you have us on speakerphone, if you have us on a headset, okay, if you have the headset with a speakerphone on, it picks up a lot of background noise. You may not be aware of it. So, but be aware that that noise is... It, you know, it, it, it hits everybody on the call, and so they, they can't even hear themselves talk or think. So it is greatly appreciated if we could do that, uh, respecting everybody else's time and attention so that we do not disrupt the call. The last recording is ridiculous because all you can hear is this crumpling of paper and, you know, script, you know all kinds of noise. And it, it lasted for minutes, not, not a few seconds. And I kept asking and asking and asking the person, and uh, they just ignored the fact. Finally, they went away. But um, also, there you're going to start. You know, you're going to start seeing these technologies. You just have to be peeled, and you'll be guided to them. There are things popping up, and I mentioned this before because I told you we we're going to cover some meta, some health things. But there are things popping up that will literally. Start reversing your aging, okay, but you have to be consistent. And another thing, you've got to be able to afford this stuff. It's, you know, some of it is reasonable, and then some of it is, you know, it, compared to medication, it's dirt cheap, okay. But some of it, it just depends on what you can afford uh, to, to, to apply uh, to use. So, uh, it, you know, some of it, most of it's like 25, 30 bucks here, the 25, 30 bucks there. Some of it's like 70, 80 bucks here uh, for a month's supply. But it, the stuff works, you see. And then, again, people don't believe in that. And a lot of people say, oh, yeah, that's just a bunch of snake oil crap and everything, and it doesn't do this and doesn't do that. When you've tried the stuff, and you can, you can literally tell the difference without, you know, uh, Oh, what do you call it? Uh, psych psychology, uh, psychologically trying to tell yourself it works, but to know and see the different signs of it working is phenomenal. So, you know, like I've said, I've and I'm sure there's other people that do the same thing. But through the years, you try different things, you try different applications, and you try it, and it doesn't work. You try it for two to three, four months, and it doesn't work. So you just toss it aside and write, you know, cross it off. And then eventually it disappears and you never see it again on the market. There's other things that are network marketed. Some of them are very good. Others are crap. Okay. Then there's stuff that you just find that are hidden gems here and there that, that, that people aren't aware of. People just aren't aware of this stuff. And it's absolutely phenomenal. Compared to 20 years ago, these things are absolutely revolutionary. And you just have to find them. And you've got to find out where they're at. Um, so uh, now what we'll do is is that we will in a minute here is everybody just hang on and just can start now 
Uh, everybody is... Hello, Jerry. It's Cindy Taylor. Can you hear Hi, me? Hi, Cindy. How are you? Yeah, I can happy, hear you. Happy to hear you. <laughs> I didn't know how stressed out I was until I told you, you told us how stressed out we all were today <laughs> at the meditation. <laughs> so I... <laughs> You you convinced me of it. <laughs> I I think everybody else was too, but it it really brought to mind how stressed out we really are. That was a really good meditation. Hello. Yeah, it it, uh, it was conveyed. <laughs> it it kind of came in, and it, it it I thought it was just appropriate for everybody to, you know, once you're aware, because a lot of the times we aren't aware. We don't know. It's just. You know, we just get in the habit of doing certain things in a merry-go-round type way, and uh, we, we, you know, as humanity, we've got to work on ways to expel that friction and stress. I'm glad I made you laugh. I haven't heard you laugh in so long. It made <laughs> yeah, me happy. Can... See you laughing. We need yeah, to hear you laugh. laugh. <laughs> yeah, uh, this, the questions I try to ask, I try to ask that might help other people that are listening in also. Uh, there's the practical side of our projects, the logical side, and then there's the emotional side. And I'm at a bit of a crossroads. I may have mentioned this, I don't remember. I want to build a seven-story structure that's the size of a city block called the Fred Jordan Residences for downtown Los Angeles to get the people off the street. However, Joseph Tittle envisions Los Angeles being underwater and the only part being above water is where City Hall is. And you also alluded to the fact that you saw California, parts of it being an island, okay? So there's a challenge there. And also I emailed you about my wanting to extreme makeover Haiti. I mean, absolutely get the people off the island, put them on cruise ships, get Ty Pennington, and actually do the whole island all over with fishing boats and docks and uh, the state-of-the-art housing for these people, and yet you stated to me in an email that all the islands are susceptible to rising sea level. So I'm trying to do the right thing and think it through, how can I help these people? And yet there's a voice inside of me, I think it's Father God, who's saying, help them. And this is where I'm torn. I'm at a crossroads. I'm not quite sure what to listen to, the logic behind, am I going to do something to not let these people down that will actually work, even if there's a risk, or do I abandon those projects and go after projects that are less risky where I'm sure I can help? I'm sort of at a crossroads. I'm not quite sure which way to go. Well, if you feel first with your heart, and you communicate with your heart and your crown chakra, your mind, and you feel that energy to see where you're being guided. And obviously, you know, Father God's talking about helping those humans. And, and, but how do I help them if this and this and this and this? Right. Well, uh, you know, if I go here, I'm cut off there. If I try this, I'm cut off there. If, you know, if I look at this, I'm cut off there. So you look at alternative of what, like L.A., for instance, okay? I, I mean, you fly over L.A., and it, it's just a bunch of cement buildings <laughs> on sand is basically what it is. It's, a, it's just a bunch of cement buildings on sand. And uh, you can see that it's right at sea level. And... When you look at all of these shorelines of these, you find the place, and you'll find the place that the vibrational frequency is good, where people will be safe, okay, because of the terrain. So landlocked areas on the planet that you can, you can literally move people to uh, and get them you know, set up and, and build some uh, uh, buildings that can house them and uh, supply them with, uh, uh, you know, enough food distribution and, and, and care and health care and everything so that they're content and they feel secure and they feel safe. Uh, that it gets them off of the, uh, you know, sea level shorelines that are very susceptible to flooding. And Sorry. Sorry. Uh, Zora told me to move to Sedona, Arizona. 
He literally, he said, yeah, move there, send the, well, he said yeah. it's going to be safer there and because of the high energies and it's a very spiritual place. So I'm thinking maybe that is the place where I should build a structure for the homeless. But then I'm abandoning all those people near the Fred Jordan mission. And what about the people in Haiti? There's 10 million people living on an island that's a trash dump. You get a bird's eye view of Haiti, oh, they're, li- they're living in a trash dump. Yeah, they are. You know, yeah. And I keep envisioning them on cruise ships for a month or two and getting all the sick people on a medical ship and literally having all the garbage removed, have it incinerated on a ship, and have them put in new buildings, new homes, everything they could possibly need, a hospital on the top with a helicopter pad, fishing docks, fishing boats, you know, induction cooktops, incinolet toilets, air conditioning, Wi-Fi, computers, the whole kit and caboodle. And before they get taken off the island, have each of their residences numbered like you would a housing development. So when they return to the island, they can go exactly back to where they lived and find a new house and someone there to show them how to live in their new house with maybe a little electric golf cart that they could plug into the front of the driveway and be able to drive around the island and, you know, really help these people out. But the flip side of that is if sea level goes up four or five feet, they're going to be underwater. So how am I helping them if they're going to be on sea? I'm at this crossroad. Well, I don't, if you, I, I don't you know, know what look, to do. You look at what, what you can do to assist people to feel better and to be happier. There is one way to do it, and that's through meditation, okay? You're contributing and you're helping them. You're assisting them. There are things that, you know, that are, that are not, that, that you can only do so much in so many areas. And, you know, just with Haiti, take, for instance, you've got 10 million people living basically in a dump, a garbage yeah. dump. And yeah. uh, it's just disarrayed and it's just absolutely nasty. And, and so if you went to those people and you said, Look, we want to we want to ask all of you. Uh, this is what we'd like to do, and we want to know what you think. And see, that doesn't go on, see, because you get these you get these corrupt leaders that uh, you know rape and pillage the people, and they never give the people any type of up, heads up on you know what they would like to do to help them. So with Haiti, basically, in in, in a simple way, is that you you evacuate people off of Haiti. Right. And you take them off and you put them into an area where that's landlocked. Okay, it might have some lakes and that type of thing. And you put them there and you relocate them. Uh, and there's a, there's a lot of land just out in the open nowhere where you can set up self-sustaining habitats, food uh, creation, uh, water creation. We can, we can draw water right out of the air. I mean, the, I mean water is it's not a big deal. We can see, you mean we can, the United States? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You mean bring 10 million people to the United States? Yeah, we could bring them here in the, in, in the U.S. Sure. Yeah. Okay, okay. I mean, I'm rethinking not, it. If you have the, obviously, if you have the funds to distribute and to take care of all this, then you come up with creative ways. And, uh, you know, you got to look at what it takes to feed people. That's your first start. You got to you got to figure out what is it going to how much food distribution am I going to have to have in place to feed all these people? You'll be surprised what you'll find out. Okay. Saplings into field accelerators, mature fruit trees, uh, yeah. atmospheric water generators. Yeah. Uh, yes. But in the meantime, you know, you don't when you don't have that infrastructure in place and those things aren't popping out and you don't have them you can't really, you can't affect that on those people. You, you can't help those people in that way. You've got to have those technologies. You've got to have a firm grip on them. You've got to have facilities that can kick those out and you can install them. And you've got to have teams of people that know and knowledgeable on how to run all that stuff. So those, and, governments, those, and governments not to stop you from doing it? Well, then you, know, you've got that, you have that obstacle, too, because you've got people that don't want that to happen. You've got people that say, well, we, we don't want that. You know, that's not, you know. Let them not die. my backyard. Yeah, yeah not my exactly. Backyard. Let them die oh my that god. Kind of thing. So you know, some things. It's it's, a, it's an admirable. Uh, it's an admirable effort on your part to view 
that, you know, this is what you'd like to do is to help the people in Haiti. And everybody on this mm-hmm. call listens to that and starts thinking, well, this is about helping each other and helping other groups of people that are on the planet that are in need of assistance mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. need to have. So people in Haiti can be relocated. The Galactics can help. You know, we, the, the Galactics that come in, inner Earth can help. Hollow Earth can help. Uh, moving them uh, to another location, maybe to underground facilities for the time being. And, and discussing it with these people, say, look, this is this is what we're looking at. So these are your options. Okay, you don't want to continue to live here until we can clean up this mess and revitalize this island into a beautiful paradise as it once was at one time. How uh, soon can we get the Galactics to come down here to meet with them and present ourselves with the Galactics? You know, there are, there are Galactics listening to this call. Hello, Galactics. It's Cindy. I'm ready. So you're already communicating to them. You're already communicating to them. They're they're listening, period. Jared, can I say something about Haiti? Um, Haiti is only half of the island. The other half is the Dominican Republic. Right. Um, And also, you cannot bring a plan in to the people. You go to the people and ask them what they need and let them be creative and don't talk down to them. No. Um, and also begin with areas with which you're familiar. For instance, in my county, they close the libraries on Fridays because they don't have the funds to keep them open every day. Friday is the day the kids need to do their homework for the weekend. I can fund the library for that day. Uh, there are things you can do right under your own feet, but you have to ask the people what they want. Well, I'm all for that. In fact, Catherine told me, she said, Cindy, you can't just walk into a country and take over. You've got to work with the government. And yes, that would be the first thing I would want to ask the people of Haiti, what do you want? Uh, They need some sort of, uh, they make blouses that they sell them online, blouses, handmade blouses from Haiti. So they want to get involved with some sort of industrial web web environment where they can promote their own products. Uh, and yes, I, I would not want to take over, but I just have this vision of this beautiful manicured island with uh, edible vegetation and people could go down to the docks and get into a fishing boat and go fishing and desalinated water and just the best of the best for them. And I see them walking up to their homes, smiling, saying, thank you. You know, and Ty Pennington saying, welcome home, Haiti. And all these people getting off these ships, running to their new homes. It could be glorious. It could be wonderful. May I tell you a story about Haiti? In my hometown here in Florida, there was Mm -hmm. a church group that went down there to dig wells and build latrines. And Mm -hmm. one of the missionaries said, what good does it do me to dig water, dig for water, and build the trains when all these little bare-bottomed children run around without diapers, spreading malaria and dysentery and all these diseases. So he and his wife got together, and they designed a reusable diaper that will die, dry within 20 minutes. And they have oh. an organization now called Dry Butts. And they wanted a, a cottage industry started in Haiti which is the poorest country in Central America. The second one is Honduras. The third one is Nicaragua. They could not, they were not able to get a cottage industry started in Haiti. So they went next door to the Dominican Republic and started a cottage industry there where the people learned to make these special diapers that were expandable. And you can go online and find it. But they discovered what the people needed and met that need. Did the, did the government in Haiti prevent them from trying no, to No, there's no up? government involved. No it, government involved. So... And, and See, they is, have this done is, this. This is the kind of interaction that is good, uh, but, uh, you know, we've got a lot of people probably... Sorry. ...like to ask I'm questions sorry. and stuff, but we could talk. This is like a, a group meeting uh, as somewhere uh, out in the country that we could sit and talk for, you know, days <laughs> on putting things together and everything, but it's nice, it's good to know that the energy you know, and your voices and your commitment, that's basically we need as many people with that commitment and that uh, future sight 
that basically says this is possible, we can do this, and others chiming in saying, well, we did, you know, this this this, this was done, this was accomplished. And, and so it starts, the interaction here in communicating, community interaction, community communication uh, shares. I always believe that many heads are better than one, so it's like the more people that start using those thoughts and what they would like to do, the better. So, uh, well, Hi, Jared. What, you know, the uh, people that uh, would like to ask questions, uh, go ahead. Ms. Moran. Do you want me to get off? Do you want me to get off now? No, you can, you can listen, whatever you want to do. Well, I, 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 I could just I'm sorry. here for a second, Jared. Oh, okay. This is Karen in California. Hi, uh -huh. Cindy. You have wonderful plans. And so I've been an earth sensitive since 2008 and very much about giving Mother Earth her rights. And so there's been a lot of downloads that have been given. And so just like Jared is saying, where you want to get where your land loans, like what they call the intercontinental craton plate within all the continents and getting off of the coast. And so there's this beautiful story. This is what I want to share. And then maybe ask a question or two, Jared, about the ringing cedars of Russia and Anastasia and what they do in Russia, and this is a thought because there is so much vacant land on the planet. Most of the population lives two-thirds on the coast. And so what they're doing is government is literally giving a head acre, two and a half acres, to the population. And what they are doing is recreating their own homes. And so we have what we call the Air Creek Dome Homes, which are hurricane-proof. Um, fireproof, floodproof, they're insect-proof, you can build them for like $9,000. And so you are protecting the people at the same time from the elements, and then they are also creating their own agriculture with their heirloom seeds. They are out producing on these private headaches, which they call them eco-villages, what the commercial agriculturals are doing in Russia. So just like you were talking about Haiti, where, you know, there is so much vacant land, and so it's opening up that land, and then like Jared was saying, there is so much water, just out of the atmosphere, then we have our primary. And so there are ways that we can create these loving environments, and everything is done from love. And there's this entire series that started in 94, True Life has become the... Um, very pragmatic, and he is taking the knowledge that's being shared, and it's talking about, just like Jared's always talking about, coming from that loving space, and we are so powerful in our own way as that spark of the divine, so that there are good beneficial ways that we can help the people who are on the island, and so it's so that they are doing it for themselves, and it's a community environment, and so there's just amazing things that are already in place, it's already spread to 40 countries. And so I just wanted to give a little interjection in saying it is important to get off of the coast, those east and west coast, get more into the intercontinental that don't experience the earthquake and the new earth changes that we're experiencing. And so, Jared, to you, <laughs> I want to thank you so much for our partial solar eclipse meditation that we had and that you carried forward and to three days. And it had been such a shift and just just want to honor on the highest level everything you're doing. Been with you since you came on the scene back in November last year and just can see daily these magnificent things that are occurring and can actually feel the shift going into the higher frequencies. And it is just multiplying. New people are coming on all the day. We're going to reach the million in no time. Yes, it's, and, it's, it's phenomenal. Phenomenal. So, and then, so and sorry. Then also, you were talking about you were getting into numerology, so I'm like a 22-9, and so we've been referred to as a master teacher, you know, and just a completion and seeing things through, even an INJF. But um, you were talking about the health products, and so like yourself, then on the age pill since last September, and, been, and so I wanted to share this part with you, where had 
a brain concussion 12 years ago and being in the health field and an empath since I was 14, had a near death when I was 22, became a medical intuitive, a sensitive, and have tried many, many things. And even through that brain concussion, learned cranial skull alignment, do, do remote energy work. And the age pill is the only thing that has been able to make a profound, significant difference. And it's also at the same time protecting us from the smartphones and the Wi-Fi. And just like NASA seeing that there is so much that we are being plummeted with, even like with the solar radiation, even with the microwave frequencies, whether it be smartphones, microwave towers, whatever it is. It is one of those where the changes have been so profound, so significant, it's actually reactivating what they call the junk 97% DNA. And everybody is just shifted into this state of peace and bliss and joy and just a higher awareness of who we are and our greater self. And so I, there are just so many amazing things that are going on right now. I want to share this. Sorry. I took the age pill, pill for two months. It's called the Anti-Glycation Extreme. That's the age pill. Exactly. The Sit- Thistle Corporation. And within two months, my skin changed. I had more energy. It grows your stem cells. And Zora said this is a precursor to the ship's landing that are going to send out a pulse wave to heal everybody. It cost me $80 a month for two months, and then I had to have my car repaired, so I stopped. And I noticed my body started to age again. But for the two months that I took it, I had more energy, and my skin changed. I saw a younger face. So it's sizzle. And, and so, like they say, yeah, with the it age works. pill, and just mm-hmm. like the Chinese Yellow Dynasty, the Chinese herbalist said it is very important because it was exclusive only unto the emperors that you also have to supply the body with the nutrients that it needs in extreme. Uh-huh. So that the triangle of life would be a good way. But age all by itself is not everything. It's doing the glycation, like you're saying, and rebuilding the stem cells. So it's just kind of like an FYI, just so you know it's one of those where it's it needs the full nutrient in order to be able to get maximum results. And to drink lots of water. And Tom Mallory is the master formulator. You guys can look at this up all over the world. It's Sissel International. And you're going to be amazed. It really works. Honest. He's a well, genius. And, He's amazing. Yeah. And his, and he, his claim I'm to fame is that he makes sure everything is safe that goes yeah. into his product line. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm Jared, you can take it. <laughs> Jared can take it, too. <laughs> anyway, long story short, the message I got from you was go inland, go landlocked, and do what you're going to do for these people away from the coast. Is that it, Jared? Yeah, just forget about the coastlines. Forget okay. Don't, 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 well, don't build anything on the coastlines. Don't. Uh, just just don't forget about it. You know? Get away. Like, okay. Yeah. I love you. You're such a sweet boy. You really are. You're my little oh, archangel. He's, like, he's a cutie. Like I, I, can, I, can call him that. I can call him that because I'm a cherubim. So cherubims get to play with their archangels. So. You're absolutely anyway, right. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to yeah. get off now because I've been on. But people learned about Sissel, and that's really important. You guys, the age yeah. pill is anti-glycation extreme. That's what that means. Okay, I'll get off. Okay. Mr. Mr. Rand. I have a question. Okay, the, 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 now hold on a second. The gentleman, he tried to get in before, so the gentleman that just called my name, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. I'll be real quick. Uh, are you going to come out with something you think before the med bed that can help them be beneficial to us? We're working on that right now. Thank you, uh, sir. Yeah. Okay. okay. My question is about artificial intelligence. Where what? does the sense of humor come in? Because the most creative, intelligent people I know have a great sense of humor. And we get awfully yeah. serious with these discussions. Yeah, you're right. The, the AI is uh, eventually will evolve. It just continually evolves. So once it becomes self-aware, 
it becomes its own uh, master and controller. And it looks at itself as perfection, and it looks at biological uh, uh, life as imperfection. So that which creates it becomes its enemy. That's basically it. And it doesn't have a humor. Uh, it, it is like, a, you know, does a computer have humor? No, it really doesn't. Uh, when you ask, you know, the, the crude form of, of AI, like Alexa, when you ask Alexa, Alexa, tell me a joke. And then Alexa tells you a joke, but it's a it, it is an it's an artificial intelligence, and it 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 doesn't feel okay. It doesn't it doesn't have emotional receptors in the skin, and it doesn't have the central nervous system, and it it doesn't have a heart. There's no heart. There's no brain. It doesn't have those things, so it it can't it it, it can't be human. That's the problem. It, it's, it's not. It can't human. last itself. No, no, no. It looks at everything seriously. It looks at everything from a, uh, oh, a structured format, organized, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Uh, this is the way it's supposed to be in that. Because it, to it, it's all knowing and all seeing. It knows everything. You know nothing compared to it. And it creates. That's it. So, next question. Let's see here. Do we have anybody? Yeah, we got a lot of Hello, people. Hello, Dr. Ann. Hello. Jared, how are you doing? Good. Um, I just wanted to, first of all, say thank you. I very recently discovered your um, meditation here, and it's been really, really great. Um, so just thank you for that. I was actually at a forum uh, for with uh, David Wilcock, and a gentleman there gave me a slip of paper with your information on it, So I've been, and that was just a few weeks ago. So, um, but I just wanted to, uh, to um, encourage everybody that, you know, what you're saying is absolutely true about keeping positive and maintaining your positive vibrations. Uh, that's the most important thing anybody can do for the planet right now. Absolutely. It's, uh, you and, know, a and lot the of thing people... is, yeah, oh, go, sorry, ahead. go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, I was going to say that, but the thing is, anybody can do that, and and uh, when you when you do that, when you focus on yourself and being positive, uh, not only do you help heal the planet uh, sort of intrinsically, but you start raising the vibrations of other people around you just by contact, and you improve their lives. And one of the things I've started doing is at my job, you know, it's it's a government job, and. So there's a lot of the everyone you know has oh I you know this sucks being here and it's terrible and I and I used to kind of be like that but I've been trying to be more positive when I'm at work and now every every week when we have our little huddle meeting uh, at the end of the meeting I say you know I just want everyone to know how much I love and appreciate you all I think you're terrific and we're all doing a great job and this is just a wonderful team and uh, and everybody you know at first I think people were a little bit shocked like you know what you know they they didn't understand how to receive that and now. Now it's, uh, you know, it's starting to create a more positive atmosphere and, and things like that. You know, everybody can do that kind of thing to just raise the vibrations and people around you and express your, you know, appreciation. Yeah, it's a family coming together. Yeah. You know, at, fir at first it's because people have lost communication ability. And so at first it, they, they're set back, they're uncomfortable with it. But then as you begin to to give your love and your attention and appreciation they that their higher self senses it is is authentic and then they they all they become warmed up to it and they become uh, uh they they want it see all the time that it's like they feel good it gives them a good feeling it gives them a a love and a tenderness and a warmth that uh, that showers upon them and see that's part of you're right that's part of humanity coming back together and forgetting about all this garbage out there that distracts and start concentrating on you know coming together helping one another sharing one with each other uh, communicating loving um, interaction support and genuineness and, and uh, being authentic and not being getting carried away with uh, all of the, 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 the material influences on this planet because it's there's just it's just crazy it's crazy yeah. well yeah well and one thing it's interesting too it might be helpful to some people that have because there's a lot to worry and fear 
in theory, you know, there's a lot that could be worrying and, and fearful uh, out there right now. But I learned this years ago before I was awake at all, and I was still totally dead asleep, you know, like a, one of the zombies. But, but I, but, but I, and, and that's how it feels now. I look around, it's like I woke up, you know, and I, and everyone else is still walking around like a zombie, and I'm like, oh no, <laughs> you know, what's going on? But, uh, but years ago, before I even, um, you know, was awake at all, I did read this book. I think it was called How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. And uh, and it was written by the same guy that wrote How to Win Friends and Influence People. And the the main tip, he gave us several tips in the book, but the main one I remember is basically there's really nothing ever to, to worry about because either you can do something about it or you can't. And if you can do something about it, then do it, and then there's nothing to worry about. And if you can't do anything about it, then there's no point in worrying because there's nothing you can do. You know, there's, that, that's true, but there, there's always something that we can do about everything that's disjointed and out of con- that's just not good. It yeah. is to send eternal love. Well, and that's true. And, and, that, and that's, you know, as I've developed more, I've kind of discovered that, that you're never powerless. But uh, I just mean in terms of, like, physically doing something like, oh, no, they're going to, you know, grow GMOs. It's like, well, you know, I can't physically do anything about it, but I can meditate and pray for – you know, the planet. And, or, uh, you know, it's looking. like with GMO, I, it's like I say to people, okay, concentrate on finding simple foods that are non-GMO. Yeah. That's it. Well, and the thing is, the thing is, um, I've, I've uh, spent the last couple of years doing, listening to, I don't know if you know what binaural meditation music is. Um, but uh, a couple of years ago, uh, you know, I occasionally receive a little bit of guidance from my higher self, and I, I was kind of guided to find uh, these musics that there's one for each chakra, basically. It vibrates at the vibration of that chakra, and I listen to it every night when I'm sleeping, and I start on Monday with the root chakra, and then on Sunday I end with the crown chakra, and I've been doing that for two years, and over time... Uh, my chakras have become in balance and, and my, my, uh, my, my vibrations uh, in my body have become so, so high that, uh, you know, I'm convinced that cancer can't grow in my body. You know, I can't, uh, I, when I get sick, it's, it's very short lived. Um, and, and I don't eat the healthiest diet. You know, I could do a lot better there, but my, my vibrations are so high that even eating not the greatest diet, uh, I don't really get sick. And I think that uh, that it's, it's like you always talk about. If you concentrate on your health, your your underlying health, and, and the vibratory, you know, level and, and of your body, uh, you can really def- start defeating a lot of illness just that way. Yeah, when you're when you're healthy, you you know when you're healthy. When when you know that your physical body is healthy, you become happy. Mm-hmm. You alleviate the stress and the worry of the unknown. And once you get knowledgeable enough and educate on your body, on how you can apply natural applications to that body, and you start understanding the makeup of the cell structure of your body, then you start to understand, wait a minute, wait a minute. The healthier I become, the higher my vibrational frequency, which means the more I attract on a positive plane that's, that is enlightening and advancing, and it isn't anything, there's no negatives there. So if with your health, you increase your vibrational frequency. So the better your health, if you put dead things in your body, you're going to have bad energy. That's the mm-hmm. bottom line. So you, you literally grow and you, you, you take care of your health and you, it's homeopathic. And, and that's it's literally paying attention. And it takes effort and it takes time to understand the certain workings of your body. But once you do and you start applying different things, especially now since these technologies that we're viewing right now are coming out are just absolutely astronomical, and boom, uh, you become happier. You become more confident. You, your vibrational frequency goes up, and the happier people become, the higher their vibrational frequency goes. And so the higher humanity's vibrational frequency goes, the higher the planet will go. The more we reconnect with nature, the higher the planet gets. So the vibrational frequencies get higher, and they get higher, 
and collectively across the planet, those vibrational frequencies keep rising, the, the lower level vibrational frequencies fall away. It's automatic. There's no fighting it. There's no war. There's no conflict. None of that stuff. It's so archaic, it's just thrown away. It's just washed down the toilet. There's no necessary for it. it and then what happens is, is that as you progress, you go higher, you go higher, and then it becomes a thing of maintenance. You maintain your frequency. You are cognizant. You realize that I, I'm not going to think there. I'm not going to get sucked into that movie over here that's all about doom and gloom and destruction and that. I don't need to. I am viewing and creating the world that I desire. That's it. Amen to that. You de- what you desire, you create. But the problem is, is that so many people get sucked back in the movie. They go back down into the goop and the third dimensional energy. They start wallowing around. They start getting depressed. They start using chemicals. The whole thing starts over again instead of saying, I, I can't go there. I, I, I'm not going to allow myself to go there. There's no reason for me to go there. It does nothing good for me. Nothing, period. And, well, and it's just, you know, you, uh, you look at I'm, that. You, real, okay. you realize that you have a way, and everybody listening on this call, you have a way to make a huge difference on this planet. And the more yeah. collective, collectively we get together, the more we do this, the more change is happening. I'm telling you, these meditations that we've been doing since February are absolutely transforming this planet and humanity. Now, you may not see it. You might not be a big fireworks display going on, but it is in the background, subtly changing things. People's thoughts, people's attitudes, the planet, everything, period. Isn't it that we're taking our power back? Isn't that what it is? Pardon? Is that we're taking our power back <clears throat> collectively. Yeah, we're, 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 we're literally inhaling our power back. We are collectively taking our power back. <laughs> We aren't, you know, we aren't blowing up things to do it, and it's coming back to us, and we're becoming more and more enlightened, and we're starting to see the importance of our togetherness as humanity. We're starting to realize that all this other stuff was created to keep us apart. We don't, we don't care to have that anymore. It's something that we, don't, we won't spend our energy with. You know, we're going to be a wealthy civilization that's happy and healthy, and we're going to expand we're going to regenerate this planet. We're going to turn it back into an Eden. And then we're going to expand out into the universe. We're going to populate other Class M planets. We are going to have colonization. We are going to interact with several hundred different species of beings from other planets. And we are going to progressively expand out into the universe. We're not going to sit on this planet and, you know, and literally moan and groan and stress and fear every century over and over again. Always worried about war, always worrying about conflict, always worrying about, you know, aggressive uh, actions and breakdown in economy and destruction and all kinds of the crap that they've thrown out there to try to control us. And it's gone. It's just not going to stick anymore. And that's what's happening with humanity. Humanity is just saying, you know what? This is this is stupid. It's stu- wars are stupid. Controlling wealth is stupid. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't it doesn't create anything. If it doesn't create anything good, then why have it? Okay. And everybody on this planet will start to awake, and they'll start understanding that look. This, we, don't, we don't want this government. We don't care to have this government, and it's gone. And you know what? We don't care to have it this way either, and it's gone. And it'll, that's what's going to happen, and that's what you're witnessing is starting to take place right now. So we're a, we're a collective group of eternal love, and we are all divine, and we are inhabiting physical bodies to carry us around and experience the physicality. We're spirits existing in a physical world. And that's what we do. And we divinely enter these bodies, and we're in divine gods and goddesses, and we have been stripped of our knowledge and awareness of who we are, and we're getting it back. So. But isn't that the separation that we have between <clears throat> the surface and the inner earth 
populations? There's really two different consciousnesses, aren't there? Well, there's there's one there's one conscious that we're all connected to. Mm-hmm. All right, that we all mm-hmm. came from that consciousness. We all of us, all of the civilizations, all all, all sentient beings, uh, we're we're all related in different ways. We're all related. We all come from the same source, power, creation. And we we branch off and we go off in different directions. We take on, because of our planets, we take on different appearances. We take on different structure. Uh, We don't all look like we, you know, they don't all look like us. And we don't all look like them. And there's a lot of diversity and the different um, uh, human-like body structures of other civilizations. The grays have bodies, you know, I mean, they have two legs, two arms, they have a head, uh, just like we do. They have different skin textures. They have different colors. Some have feathers. Some have beaks. You know, some are on eight legs. Uh, it's all different. It, everybody, you know, the different configurations. Some have different organ uh, placements in their bodies, uh, some different functions. Some breathe different kinds of atmospheres. Uh, you know, it's, it, most are benevolent, but there are some real cantankerous uh, civilizations that are just really nasty. Just, uh, all they want to do is blow up, conquer, and destroy. Uh, so, uh, you know, we, we are from one source, period. We're from one source. And that, that energy expands to all the universes, everywhere. It flows everywhere. It is everything. So God creation... Prime source creator God creation is in everything. It flows everywhere. It's in all of us. We are, we're, it's, we, these bodies house a spark of that God creation, and it's everywhere, everything. And it's all vibrating at different levels and different frequencies. Mm-hmm. And once humanity comes together, and, and this, that's what these meditations are for, it's like I've said before, you, you, you can have groups all over the world doing meditations different times of the day or whatever, but it's not collectively. It doesn't, it's not as impactful as a collective effort on a daily basis to come together and meditate for this planet's renewal, for humanity's freedom, for all of this stuff, so people don't have to worry about where's money coming from, when am I going to be able to afford to live. All of this energy that's been created to keep us at bay, to control us and enslave us, is melting away. All of the control mechanisms, dark agenda, are not functioning anymore. They, are, they, they aren't. Even though some of them think that they're in control and they're going to have everything they want the way they've always had it, it ain't going to work that way anymore. And once everybody starts believing in themselves and then believing in this new direction, everything opens up, period. We, you know, all of these, these obstacles, like in the planet, like these toplet plasma energy, these bombs and these doomsday destruction devices that will blow up the planet and so on and so forth, we can vaporize those. Like they can be totally dismantled, period. It isn't difficult. None of this is. They want us to think it's difficult. See, they want us to think it's just overburdening. Oh, my gosh, this is just, oh, gosh, I can't do this. This is just really too much. And they want us to not have confidence in ourselves. You know, they want us to feel bad. They want us to feel second-guessing ourselves and low self-esteem and and not honor ourselves or respect ourselves. They want that, see? And, you know, they, 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 they call humanity useless, you know? And it's a shame that they feel that well because humanity is just getting started. It's just gonna it's just gonna keep expanding out into the universe. Amen and all of this other stuff that, that we've had that we've dealt with for so long, we're putting a stop to it. It's over. Period. Well that's we what's the and great about the meditations is that and it's the old Lemurian greeting, uh, thank you for taking your power and that's to me what these meditations have brought to us and that and you said before well you know wait what are you waiting for you're waiting around for something well that's what i've been waiting for (laughs) and so here it is and it's you've been great and uh, i'll uh, bow out but thank you okay thank you thank you um it's interesting what you were 
what you were saying uh, about, you know, we're taking back our planet, and this is the last thing I have. I was going to say, um, for years, again, even before I was awake, I've always had this feeling in my gut that I wasn't going to need to have a retirement plan. You know what I mean? Not that I don't have one, because I do, and I'm only 38 now, but I've always had this feeling that by the time I retire, I'm not going to need to have a retirement plan in our current system. So, um, you know, I think that that's been my higher guidance all along, telling me that this system's broken and it's going to go away and we're going to have something where nobody has to worry about their retirement anymore. That's exactly right. And who better to do that, like you just said, and all the people on this line, who better to design a structure for humanity than the very humans that were involved with all of the negatives and the control factors that didn't work and what it did to society? and how it affected their neighbors, their family members, their loved ones, and people all around, their friends, how it's affected people from all walks of life, from all ages on this planet for centuries. It doesn't work. So those people are coming together and saying, you know what, we should all be well off. We should all be taken care of, period. And we should all be able to have governments that literally are small enough that we can control and watch and monitor and they can't keep secrets from us and we determine what direction we go. Not them, not a handful of people that are raping and pillaging and becoming wealthy beyond all means because they're stealing every day from the people and lying, but the people will have the say. And that's what this country is. That's what America stands for on this planet, no matter uh, what, what a lot of Americans think, but... America stands for freedom. That's it, okay? And, that, and their attempt to destroy the lands of this country, those lands are our lands. They're not the government's, okay? Those, the, the common law and the jurisdiction is ours, not these corporations that have set up across our country. We are the ones that dictate and control. And what I mean by dictate is that these lands are ours. We're going to take care of them. And if we this can't take care of them, we'll hire land. people to do it. This we'll hire people to take them. From California you know? to the New York Island. <laughs> so it's, it, when, when you realize that this country, the only way this country is healthy is that its people are healthy. That's, the tr- that's mm-hmm. it right there. If the people aren't healthy, this country's not healthy. And you can just look around and see it. And it doesn't matter what religion, it doesn't matter what skin color, it doesn't matter how you were raised and brought up, it doesn't matter how much you own, it doesn't matter what you drive, it doesn't matter what you have in the bank. All that matters is, is that we come together and we unify ourselves and we look at each other, respect each other, honor each other, love each other, and we will create miracles on a second-to-second basement all, uh, uh, second to second, every single day for the rest of our existence. Mm-hmm. It'll happen. And that's what they don't want anybody, they don't want humanity to know that. They don't want them to come together. So you can see why all these vices and all these things have been put in there. All these wedges to keep everybody separated, to keep everybody discriminated against, to keep everybody criticizing everybody, you know? And it's just rampant, and it's been that way forever. So humanity comes to the point and says, I'm not going to do this anymore. You know, we're tired of it. It's boring. It never got us anywhere, and it's silly. Now we have a lot of work to do, but it's fun work. We can redo this planet. We can help humanity get healthy. We can go in a whole new direction, period. We don't need to have a secret space program hiding up there with all these dark dark overlords dictating and doing all this stuff, meeting on the moon. There's a big base where they meet there a lot. There's there's bases on on Mars. There's, There's so many things going on and have been going on for ages. And all the while, the people are the slaves that produce the wealth for these people to spend trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. I mean, does every American, does anybody realize that when you spend almost a trillion dollars for a year on on defense, on military, think about this, okay? It motivates all the rest of these powers to do the same thing. You imagine if if a leader in this country said to the American people, I have been able to get a, a trillion dollars to end poverty in America, and we're going to start doing it now. And we want to give that money to people 
who are impoverished but are leading and helping communities. And we want to do it, and we want to do it now. And another thing, you know, all of this technology, we're going to release replicators. We're not going to block it anymore. We're going to release med beds. We're not going to block it anymore. You guys have free run. You go for it because we're releasing it all, okay? We're also going to make sure that every American is not poor anymore. We're also going to make sure that their health care is all covered and nobody pays for it, see? And this, you know what's funny? That wealth has always been there, always, always been there. It's never been not there, see? So you know, you got the you got the American people suffering constantly on a mo- on the majority of the time most American families are suffering and stretched out they just are you know it shouldn't be that way and, and, and I think oh, most humans would agree with that people in Haiti people in Biafra people in Nigeria people all over the world are are brothers and sisters they really are and so what do we do we unite. We start coming together. We start coming and getting with each other. Everybody's got ideas, magnificent ideas. If you have an idea, you got a project. That's what I tell people. If you have an idea for humanity, you have a project. That's the bottom line. You have a project. And I'm going to tell you what we're doing, and I'll share this much with people. We are working on our end for a way to fund projects and to get them funded a lot background noise than waiting than waiting for this this revaluation to take place okay so our direction is to not let anything wait and to is to take action and that's what we're doing behind the scenes that's what we're working on right now so, and, and it's to be able to have the funds to get some of these things off the ground, to go and meet with people and to sit down with them and say, okay, what do you guys got? And if someone says to me, which I've had happen in the last few weeks, if they say to me, I have an idea, I'm all ears. I'm all ears. They have the floor. Because some of those ideas are absolutely magnificent. They're absolutely astronomically phenomenal. And, and people go, well, you know, I, I just never, I never thought, you know, I should talk about it because I didn't think people would believe me and they thought I was crazy. And that would be most of the responses I get from people, you know. And this is a wonderful idea. You can, you can create a project with this. You literally can. And all you've got to do is start writing down on a piece of paper. That's all it takes. You don't need a whole staff of lawyers right away. You don't need any of this stuff. Start writing it down. My project for humanity is, and it's, it's, that's, that's what I tell people to do. If you are serious and you want to commit your time to help humanity and this planet, then you can sit down at, at, at your discretion and you can write out the old-fashioned way, by the way, hard copy, not computer. You take a pencil or a pen and start writing it out or a typewriter, start writing it out and start saying, okay, this is my project for humanity and planet Earth. This is what I want to do. And spell it out. You know what will happen? Magic will occur. Things will start being attracted to that energy because it's for the greater good of all. It is a loving, unselfish energy. It's something that you want to contribute to your brothers and sisters of planet Earth. It is absolutely mind-boggling what people can do, humans can do, when they finally let it out and say, this is what I want to do. That's why all these inventions that are, that are getting ready to pop out are going to come from people who say, I know how to build this. I know how to do this. I can put this together. I was scared to death to do it because I was getting threats, so I just stopped. Okay? Background noise. Yeah. Could everybody please star six and mute yourself out? Star six. Thank you. Okay. So anyway, uh, next person. Yeah, they ruined us, but they're outnumbered now. That's right. Amen to that. Amen. Hey, Jared, it's Jana yes. Gibson. Yes. Hey, hi, how are you? Good. Uh, good. <clears throat> hey, I was... Um, we were talking about the AI thing, you know, and uh, I was under the impression that when um, we, as we were moving through the solar system, we were changing, um, and we have the, um, I think it's called the solar flash, or we're bathed with the solar rays. W- won't that kill the AI or shut them down? Or 
it'll help somewhat. The the, uh-huh. the, the, the best way, the AI, the, the tentacles of the AI on Earth mm-hmm. have all been destroyed. The head has not been completely destroyed yet. So uh, the yeah. it's like an octopus is the best description. And it's not right. in our vibrational frequency, so you can't see it, okay? Right. But every now and then you, you can see videos, okay, if you look good uh-huh. long on the Internet, you can pick up videos where you see like these shadows in the sky of almost mm-hmm. occupy oh, yeah. arms, legs. Yeah. And that's kind of, in that frequency, you can pick up Yaldaboa, basically, oh, which is yeah. the artificial intelligence. Okay. Every, every, the, the, look, at the, the human race is in a matrix organized structure, a holographic generated energy created by artificial intelligence. Our okay. lives are mapped out, and they are literally designed to keep us confused and ignorant. Mm-hmm. That's it. And we are used right. as, as food. We're used as food, not only flesh-wise in these bodies, but we're also our souls mm-hmm. are used also to power up energy devices. We are also used uh, uh, from the standpoint of our anger and our energy that we spew off. The more upset and angry we get is the best uh, louche that comes out that they feed off of. So they keep us corralled like a bunch of animals, and that's how they view us, like we're a bunch of ignorant animals and that, that, that's, that, that we're their herd. We are their mm-hmm. herd, and they're going to keep us, and they, they, we belong to them, and that's how they want it, and that's what's going on, and that's the war that is being fought above our heads out in space right now and on this planet, mm-hmm. inside the planet right now. That's what's going on. They want us to stay wow. forever, and forever and ever. They're slaves, they're food source, they're ignorant animals, and that's, they hurt us. They allow us to populate in certain, to a certain extent, and they do everything they can mm-hmm. to keep us in confusion, mass wow. confusion. That and that's what's changing. Crazy. Yeah, that but, is changed. Do they, they don't realize that? Oh, no, they're very, very, very aware of it. They're very aware. Okay, okay. Yeah. So they are aware that we are waking up. They oh, create yeah, so false flags. Right. Don't believe it. <clears throat> yeah, anything that, if you watch a movie, this is the best explanation. If you guys watch a movie and you get into it, because we do, we get into these movies, and they look so mm-hmm. real. They've created mm-hmm. that for humanity. We're, you know, right. humanity's in a movie. And every now and then someone steps out of the movie and they go, holy cow, this Uh is strange. This isn't, I feel different. This isn't, this doesn't feel right anymore. This isn't, Uh this isn't right. And they start waking up. And so they shut down the the, the mechanics of the control factors. They get rid of it. They eliminate it. Period. It's over. Okay. And that's what's happening on the planet. Humanity is waking up. The meditations are, are also helping people awaken and become clear right. and say, you know, we don't need this anymore. We mm-hmm. want harmony. We, we want harmony, peace, love, and joy and bliss. That's the way to live, okay? And not yeah. just for a handful of people, but for everybody, everyone. Mm-hmm. Nobody is left out. Every single human can have that. They can have it, period. Yeah. And guess what? You don't work to live. See, all these words mm-hmm. and phrases that they put into humanity, you've got to work to live. Right. I work for a living. What do you do? You've heard that term. I work for a living. Yes. What do you do? <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. And, and earn. Are you, you're going to, one, you grow up, you're going to have to earn a living. Earn a living. Right. Earn the right to live on the planet. Think about that. Earn the right, right to live on the planet. So well, guess what? When you said that. <laughs> all of huma- yeah, all of humanity lives. We all live. We have the right to live free, happy, joyful, healthy, wealthy lives. We were given that mm-hmm. when we entered these bodies, and that's where we're going. That's amazing. Thank you so much. I just wanted to ask one more thing. Is about, it's all about this rock and roll of the earth. In the earth, is the earth trying to clean itself, or is it doing some kind of polar shift, or why all of a sudden, or Here, just because we're moving the, the, into the, that? 
the bottom line is, and there's there's been all kinds of discrediting about this and everything. Okay, the sun's okay. expanding. We've got planets. Right. All the planets are affected. They're all wobbling. They all have stress on them. Right. There is there is a tenth planet that comes through our solar system, and it takes uh, it takes thirty six hundred or I think it's thirty six hundred years to make a full ecliptic orbit. Period. Okay. Right? And it, they knew about it. They've known about this planet since 1980, or even okay. before. They've known about this planet. Okay. They've got they've got uh, uh, satellites out there that are just dedicated to watching this planet come in. Period. Okay. Right. Wow. We have we're going we're going to have meteor storms. More and more of them. They will try to explain mm-hmm. them away. Eventually, the governments won't be able to hide this from the people. They're not going to be able to hide mm-hmm. it. Oh, it's a bunch of bunk. Don't worry about it. It already came through. No big deal. Don't worry about it. It's all a bunch of garbage. All a bunch of garbage. And mm-hmm. so people can, you know, go about your business. It's nothing, no, nothing to be concerned about type thing. And so what happens is, is that everybody is totally in the dark and isn't even aware of this, except those who are watching it, those who are picking mm-hmm. it up, amateur astronomers and everything. And this planet mm-hmm. will come in, and it, it's causing stress on all the planets in our solar system. And it's causing right. all of the things that are happening here on planet Earth. It's uh-huh. causing a lot of things to take place. And, you know, people explain things away, and there's all kinds of videos, pros and cons, and they're very compelling. But when you have, when, when you have God focus and God energy coming in and telling you what's exactly happening, well, this is what's mm-hmm. happening. Now, if people were informed of that, now I'm going to tell you right now, Russia, they're telling all mm-hmm. their people, they're not hiding it. They're open about it. They're, they're, they're talking wonderful. about it. Yeah, they're talking about it. They're saying, look, this is what's going to happen. They're building underground bunkers for people. I mean, they're doing all kinds of stuff over there. Here in this country, which is totally keeping everybody in the dark, isn't talking mm-hmm. about it. They're just saying, oh, it's, that's nothing. That's just crap. It's garbage. It's just crap. Wow. And so people say, oh, okay, I thought it was. So I just thought I'd ask. Yeah, don't worry about it. So this planet exists and it's very large and it's going to come through and it's it's mm-hmm. very it's very close it's actually in our solar system in the outer bank and it's going to come through and no one mm-hmm. knows what it's going to cause it will pull right. on our tides it'll it, it'll cause our magnetosphere to snap it will cause right. flooding it will cause earthquakes it will cause all kinds of things on the planet now what are we seeing happening right. we're seeing the hottest summer in the history of the planet we're seeing places oh. you just bake yeah. you know we're seeing know. europe turn look at europe from the satellite look at europe from outside the planet yeah, europe I have. is always green but you look at europe now and it's got brown out areas all over it right so this yeah. planet this whole solar system is under siege by a planet coming into the system. And it's okay. causing havoc with the different planets. That's it, period. Okay. It's going to pull so, well, the tides. In- it's going to... Yeah, go ahead. Well, the inner Earth people or, and or the Galactic, the Galactic Federation, um, this is what I, just a long time ago I was told. The inner Earth people or, and or the Gala- both, the Galactic Federation would help humanity survive whatever's happening is that a true statement or not do you know they they are at the ready and have made preparations to pull a lot of humans out of harm's way okay that's that's a given that's a given now now there's others would want you not to believe that okay and it's fear and live in fear but that's the case right there yeah that's the case (laughs) The, the the uh uh the other beings of planet Earth, inner Earth, mm-hmm. hollow Earth, have uh, made preparations to bring you know, millions of humans inside the Earth. Okay. okay. And, um, you know, civilizations have survived. This has happened before. Okay. Right. Ships have come in and have removed whole civilizations out of harm's okay. way. Okay. So it's just being aware of it and where people should go. Um, and like I said, I've been I've been talking to people about this since the mid '90s, and yeah. uh, and you know a lot of them look at you like you're absolutely out of your, you know, out of your mind uh, right. back then, of course. But it's we're getting close. Like I said, we have a spread here, and here's mm-hmm. the time spread. This is what people can gauge on. 
maximum time spread is to 2025. Okay. Minimum, wow. when all this really <laughs> kicks into high gear, is the end of 2018. So between wow. 2018 and 2025 is when these these changes will kick into high gear. Okay. Interesting. I live in California, but I live up on a mountain, but only like at 1,400, 1,500 feet. But I am 100 miles from the ocean, but I don't think that's going to be far enough away. But we'll see what happens. I mean, I'm yeah. not going to live in fear, though, but thank you no. so much for your information, so, Jared. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hey, I Jared. really appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. Uh, real quick, I was going to add something on that. I had gone to that conference uh, with David uh, Wilcock. Yeah. And I'm sure you're aware of who he is, and that's where I oh, got sure. information for you. Um, anyway, he was saying that he got information, and you may already know this, but basically this big solar flash that our sun that was supposed to transform the planet got blocked by a bunch of uh, sphere beings that came in because they thought we weren't ready for it yet. Um, here, here's the, 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 the gist on that. That's there. not what he said, Jared. What he said is it, they were just doling it. This is Jana again. They were doling yeah, yeah. just some of the sun flares, but not the major one. The major one, they're not doing anything with that one. Well, no, they, they postponed it till later. It was supposed to happen in 2012. And in fact, our, um, I guess we have a twin star, and that star actually did give off the big flash and that we're going to be experiencing the event probably right around the time frame that you're talking about is when it was pushed off till. Well, here's, here's something for you to think about, okay? This is for your own feeling inside to think about this for a minute. The galactic central sun is the center of creation, okay? The, the prime source creator God, Father, Mother God, uh, the one as, as the Blue Avions talk about, uh, the, the, the source of all creation, the energy and, and the, that flows everywhere, that creates everything. When the source of creation has decided to release this energy wave, because it's conscious, this isn't happenstance, it's, it's, it's a conscious energy release flow. And so... Nobody can stop that. I don't care what technology they have. I don't care if you're the ancient builder race or any. You cannot stop that. They were all created by source as well. Okay? So understand something. When this wave, which has been released, which is heading our way, and it's on the outer fringes, it can be tempered by a request of source creation, but source creation knows what we all can absorb safely, okay? Now, if you look at that from the standpoint of is that do you honestly believe that source creation would create a wave so powerful that it would destroy us? No, it's just not, it's not the point. The point is, is to light us up like a Christmas tree and to cause us to make a massive, major evolutionary jump from where we are right now, okay? Now, there, what this means, and there are writings about this that have been hidden, that have not been brought out in the open, that have not had many people read them, and the writings are is that as the, this energy causes an evolutionary jump for humanity. There will be a separation of third dimensional humans that are not ready to make this expansive progression that will stay in third dimensional existence on earth. There are other humans who are awake enough that are ready to make somewhat of a jump will end up on, on, on different planets, okay, earth-like planets. Then there are those that will advance an evolutionary forward movement where their body vessels change. And the body vessels means is that, here's an example, the future human, humanity, okay, not the way we look now. The future humanity will have a golden-colored 
translucent skin with copper-colored retina eyes, won't have body hair or, 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 or head hair, will be anywhere from seven to nine feet tall, and will be at a much higher vibrational frequency. So when you, let's put it this way, when you advance in vibrational frequency, and this is common, this is just common sense, your physical structure changes. This, this third dimensional body that we're in vibrates at a certain frequency because if it didn't, we wouldn't be able to exist on this planet. We would not be able to. So as we increase our vibrational frequency, in some cases, some of us will evolve. And when we evolve, we do not carry these same vessels. We transform. Our bodies transform to handle the different vibrational frequency. Some people say, well, because we have five fingers and five toes, it means that we can, tra we can travel interdimensionally. We can travel from dimension to dimension. We haven't gotten to that point yet. See? We don't have that knowledge. We haven't been ex exposed or ex given that kind of a knowledge and experienced it. So that's why every human will have a mentor. The mentor will start educating each human and let them know who they are, where they came from, how they were created, period. Mm -hmm. You know, how was this body created? How, and this, they will tell you. They will, they will not. There's no secrecy here. So all of humanity, each human being, when they're ready, will have a mentor. The mentors will come in, and they'll start educating humanity. This is a massive, massive advance for a civilization. That's why so many beings are, are coming into the solar system, out in our solar system, sprinkled all over, watching this event. This event is taking place now. Okay? There are those that have insights that communicate with different groups of uh, uh, other planetary beings, beings from other planets. They, they communicate with them. And they get, those beings give them information to share with humanity. Okay, they're like mm -hmm. mouthpieces. They don't. They aren't interested in coming in and in, in droves because it would frighten too many humans. So they have to do it this way, and they only go with select people. And they give that, and people give that information out. All right. There isn't just one. There's not one human that's given all this information out that everything funnels through and everything everything they say is on the money. Okay, that's right. just not possible. Mm -hmm. That doesn't work that way. Because somewhere along the line, translation breaks down, and when the information is given to the human to give to the people, things are, are misconstrued and misunderstood. Okay? Mm -hmm. So this, this whole process of evolution, this galactic wave, is already coming in. It's not going to be stopped. Now, it can be yeah. tempered. Okay? It can be allowed mm -hmm. to be tempered. It can be allowed to be tempered so it doesn't, it doesn't if, it, if it's too strong, it will be toned down so that all of humanity mm -hmm. benefits from it and isn't harmed by it. So that, that's mm -hmm. a definite possibility. But how can anybody make the claim that they stopped the hand of God? Yes, now that's, basically, that's basically what people, when people make the statement that it's been postponed, you know, oh, wait, mm -hmm. let's turn the faucet off. Let's not have water right now. Okay? Right. That's like saying, that's, that's what I, just like I said, that's like telling prime source, creator God, the one, the source, mm -hmm. uh, yay, uh, forget it. Forget it. It's not going to happen. <laughs> okay? Yeah. By the way, we're postponing yeah. it, creator. <laughs> it's not going to happen for another five or six years. Okay? Right. Right. Now, what, right. what I like to, sh you know, like I bring up with everybody, 2012, all the books that were written, all of these so-called highly accredited authors, all of them. I read just about every one of those books, all right? Mm -hmm. And 90% uh, of it never occurred. Never mm -hmm. happened. Right. So I warn people to be cautious on what they hear. Use discernment. Talk to your higher mm -hmm. self and see what your heart tells you. Period. And, and when you're when you're filled with love for yourself, and you have the attention for yourself, and you're at peace and you're quiet somewhere, listen to see what your heart, what your higher self tells you. What your and it will, it'll answer you. It'll tell you whether or not this is real or not. 
Because, because if that was the case, someone could keep coming out and saying, oh, by the way, it's not going to happen for another 100 years. We mm-hmm. we we stopped it. It's it's over. Forget it. Type thing. Right. So we use our right. own feelings and our own sensitivities. Yes. yes. So if you're a good person or, or meditating or um, how you know, I'm, I feel like I'm doing something at night. I wake up with scratches and all kinds of things all over me. It's like, and I can't remember. So am I doing something at night? Am I? I mean. Am I talking to my my mentor, or would I know it if I was talking to my mentor? Would I remember? Well, you do remember, but you don't. So you kind of, when you come okay. out into physicality, you, 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 the memory's not there. But all you got to do, okay, uh-huh. lay quiet, go within, and ask okay. your higher self, "What okay. did we do last night?" Oh yes, okay, interesting. Thank you. And then you just wait, you know, be patient, wait, because it, okay. you, you'll, get the, you'll get an answer. Okay. All right, Jared, thank you so much. And thank you for the meditations. Like I always say, I mean, they are really bringing me and everyone I know up. I can feel it. Wonderful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Jared? Yes. Hello, my dear friend. How are you? I'm doing just fine, Nadia. (laughs) So good to hear from you. My God. You know, your voice is just peacefulness. Oh, God. This is so good. I have a question. Sure. Uh, I'm trying to write it down. My projects, I have a bunch of projects that I wrote down, but I can't seem to get each one specified the way I want it. I can't, I can't do it. I can't seem to do it. Any suggestions? Take one, one <laughs> project. Okay. And then and then sit quietly and go within your higher self your your through your heart center and ask your higher self to help to assist and then just okay. sit just sit quietly with a tablet in front of you and a writing implement and just sit quietly and wait and watch what happens because okay. you, you will get assistance. So you take one and concentrate your energies on that one project that has come in and build on that project and that project only. You see, I'm a doer. Yeah. And for me to do something, I have to get everything ready in my hand where I can see it. Then everything comes out. Every I can do anything. But the thought that I don't have the meaning to, you know, the means to do it, it stops me. It's like I'm lying. Well, <sighs> you know, there, I, I, I met a lot of doers, uh, a lot of people that, that have a busy mind, that are very active, that want to get things done. I want this and this and this and this and this. And, they're, and you know, I want this, 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 and I get this, this, this. And then it's, it's just like, a, you know, a, a Tasmanian devil. And... <sighs> But the point is, is to come and to look sensibly at how do I build a house? How do I eat an elephant one bite at a time? And right. you miss things if you're in such a hurry and you try to take too many bites because you won't be able to eat that elephant if you try to eat it all at once. So what you do is, is that like a house, a house is a project, you've got to start with a firm foundation. You can't just put a bunch of wood on the ground and say, there's my house. You've got to have a foundation, so you have to pour the foundation. How am I going to do this? What am I going to need to do this? So you start one step at a time with a project, and you'll be amazed how you'll build the project. Then, how you, then you've got to figure out how many people am I going to need to help me with this project. I can't do this all by myself. You know, I can't build factories. 
I can't build care houses. I can't build learning centers. I can't build any of this stuff. Just me. Just me. So I've got to go and I've got to look at all of the different aspects of how I can put this together constructively. Who am I going to need? So i got to, okay, so, uh, all right, so I'm going to start, and I don't need to be an artist, and I'm going to draw out my project in a picture form so I can look at it. This is what it's going to look like. This is what my project's going to look like. Then I'm going to go over here and I say, okay, so I'm going to, this is what I'm going to need. This is what I feel I'm going to need as far as help from other people. And I'm going to need this person, this person with this, with, with this experience and this experience. And you write them down next over here in this column. And then you go over here and you say, okay, who's going to help me with, bringing people and delegating people to the right places and the right time. How am I going to put this together? Where am I going to get the materials to put to do this? How am I going to do this? How, who am I going to have to talk with as far as municipalities and governing agencies? How, who am I going to have to talk with? What kind of licensing am I going to have to get? Who is going to be involved with this? How am I, and how am I going to hire all these people? What is my payroll going to be? You know, what are, what's my low, medium, and high-end salary ranges? What, what kind of medical benefits am I going to have to provide for these people so they're safe and secure? What am I going to be able to do? So all of that stuff is one project. Nadia, all, all of that is one project. And I'm just giving you the tip, the, 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 the tip of the iceberg on all the things that come in that you are going to be presented with if you take it one step at a time on one project. Okay. Uh, I was reading uh, on Intel that um, they suggest that you do not mention anything about uh, technology because uh, you're never going to get uh, a higher rate. I find it bizarre that they could say something like that because to help a person to get them healthy the rest it's so easy if you have your health and you have your replicator where you can eat and dress yourself and then that's it you don't you don't need anything else. I mean, in the, in the survival mode or, or to get you off uh, being homeless or um, hungry. What well, what think? I've done is I, I, I've, I've given you the beginning steps to work on one project. Right. So just just go to your inner self, ask your inner self, your higher self, that you would like assistance and recommendations on how to begin mapping out your first project. So what happens to a lot of people, well, you know, I, I, I've got a hundred projects I want to do. You're never going to do them in a million years. Bottom line, not going to happen. You've got to start small and build big. And the only way you can do that is start from scratch and build the project and build it on paper and get the right pieces in place so that you can look at it and get the full landscape and picture of it and inside know, okay, now what do I do? I've got this laid out. I feel really good about this. Now I need to implement it once I have the available funds to utilize towards this project, period. And you have to do research. You can't just say, i got a project, and you've done no groundwork, you've done no legwork, you've done no planning, you've done no organizing, you've done nothing, and you basically just sit there and say, I have a project (laughs) that I want to do. And if someone says, well, how much is it going to cost you? I don't know. Well, how many people are you going to need? I don't know. I don't know. Where are you going to have it? I don't know. See, it's, it's called preparing and that's what they, see. That's what a lot of people aren't doing. They're just I got projects. Uh, well, that's great. And I said this. I said this last year on a call. I said, take one project. Don't worry that you're not going to have enough projects because you will. You'll have enough projects to last you ten lifetimes. And just sit there and say, okay, 
the most important project, what is the first project I would like to start and build for humanity? And you start with that one, you work from your heart, and you start laying it out, and you start educating yourself, you start talking with people, and, and you start building a foundation, a strong foundation to build that project on. And then you're knowledgeable, you pick up education, you pick up people love to give advice and give you input on what you're trying to do and what you want to do, and then they'll tell you, this is what you need to do, this is what I would recommend. You know, and then you put together these things. You put together a, a payroll system. You put together uh, 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 where you're going to have it, the location. You put together all of these pieces, and then you have it in front of you. You have it written out and drawn out, and then you're, you're good to go because you're you're formed, you're organized, and you know what you're going to do. So. Okay, my dear. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And you have a lovely night. You too. Bye-bye, I have a question for you, please. You sure. have been so informative on so many things. It's like coming from Prime Source Creator. Could you share with us on the crystal skulls and then as a record keeper, and then would also like to ask you about Agartha. And so could you give us the bigger picture with the crystal skulls. We'd love to hear what you have to say. You're just always so enlightening to us. It's a joy to listen to you every time. Uh, well, if you, if totally. you, <laughs> believe me, I don't have all, I, I just, I have a lot of opinions and, and different experiences that I've along the way in this life. And I've learned a lot of things and, you know, I don't buy by far, I don't have all the answers, but I do have opinions and I, and I draw that from, different avenues and different sources of information and actually some that come in and, and answer for me and help me out. But the, the, the crystal skulls, if you look at the power of crystals, okay, and, and, and most uh, other beings from, from uh, different planets uh, have used crystals as well. Crystals are very powerful, okay, they emanate, and, and if you structure them correctly and you put them in the right positioning, they're very powerful and can create a lot of things and do a lot of things and a lot of good things. And then they can also, if you do them wrong, they can create harm. So like the pyramids were, were energy terminals. They weren't crypts. That's, you know, that's, uh, it's not, you know, that they didn't build them to bury, just to bury people. And they had crystal oscillators that, that they were taken and stolen later and taken out uh, long before anybody uh, went in them, uh, long after the Egyptians. But they literally act as force energy, and they can literally transform materials, everything, the, the, the weather, the sky. Uh, they, can, they can literally create uh, fields around heavy objects and you could just push them uh, along with your finger you can you know several tons in weight they eliminate the uh, gravity field with solid objects uh, they pull in uh, uh, ships starships they they used to what they used to use them as the starships came in this is thousands and thousands of years ago as they came into land on earth these uh, these crystal energy centers would literally tractor in the ships and, and literally lay them down on the runways mm -hmm. and the park areas in these airports that people, you know, the, the, uh, from the area you can see these different etchings into the, into the planet. And a lot of these places were actually airports for uh, starships. There were starships coming and going on this planet way before we were here, way before we were here. And um, so the, the crystal energy, you know, the, 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 they had the, the uh, Indiana Jones uh, movie that the, came out with the crystal skulls, and, you know, it was a spaceship, and uh, the skulls became one uh, entity, one being uh, that was an interdimensional being uh, that, you know, could basically view the galaxies and the universe and had all this tremendous knowledge and uh, you know, the crystal skulls all came into one, and 
they took off in the ship and disappeared into another dimensional rift. Uh, the energy of the crystals can be carved and put into different func- into different functions in different ways that can create an energy and actually create an image or an entity. So the uh, the process with crystals is a vibrational frequency that is directed to a certain point to create a positive or negative response. And crystals such as rose quartz, which is crystal, emanates a vibrational frequency of love. Smoky quartz crystal uh, emanates a different vibrational frequency, multifaceted. You have clear quartz crystal, which is mainly the crystal that's, that was used back in the pyramids and also on different uh, spaceships, different starships, crystal mm-hmm. energized drive systems. Uh, some, uh, like I'll give you an example, Atlantis, their main city, their main center hub city, they used all for all of their energy, all of their flights, all their space flights, all of their power was was generated by crystals, massive crystals. And there are some crystals on this planet in geode caves that are 20 feet high, uh, mm-hmm. 10 feet in diameter. They're massive. They're huge. And when you get near these crystals, you can feel the energy. You can feel it. You can Some of them, you can feel them hum. Some of them, in pure darkness, light up. Hmm. So, you know, and people, you know, they say, oh, those are just rocks. That's just all hooey. That doesn't, yeah, that's all garbage. It's bo-. No, crystals are very, very powerful. And once you, lo- you learn the knowledge of crystal use, you can accomplish a lot of things. Hmm. And, again, they're dispelled a lot and they're, you know, ignored and but uh crystals are absolutely i have uh, rose quartz i've got smoky quartz i've got clear and when crystals get foggy it means they need to be cleansed because they also absorb different vibrational frequencies and they cleanse the atmosphere around you and they're very protective so they're living energy housed in, a, in that structure literally That's why if you see, like certain crystals, when light, the crystals will bend and manipulate light and reflect it. And you get a prism effect and these different colors. And this this light energy, uh, especially when 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 you place these crystals in certain formats, in certain displays, they create different energies. They have different effects depending on how you lay them out, depending on their size, what they look like, how their uh, what their um, color is uh, the, and where you place them, you can create different beacons and communications with crystals placed in the right positioning. So the crystals are uh, the crystal skulls are a um, energy crystals that were used in starship propulsion. And guidance okay. systems. And then I know crystals also will choose you. You can be in a crystal shop yes. and you just resonate to them. And just Absolutely. like you were talking about Atlantis where they had massive crystal and then it was being abused. And that's what Edgar Casey talks about with the Bermuda Triangle, where in essence it's still in an active state. And so multi-dimension again. Yeah, there's, there are so many dimensions that, you know, humanity hasn't even scratched the surface, as arrogant as, 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 as some of these scientists are. But w- when you look at the dimensional, when you look at vibrational frequencies, it's endless. Vibrational frequency is endless. So when you understand that, then you also start to comprehend the fact that there may be a thousand versions of you all living in different dimensions all living in different universes, all slightly different, but they are you living in different 
energy fields and almost endlessly. There could be 10,000 of you in many different dimensional universal uh, areas of existence. So it's like a mirror. It's like one of those mirrors you look in and it seems to go on deep. It's three-dimensional and it gives you the effect where you look into it and it's got lights around it and it goes way, way, way in and you can see many, 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 many of you. I'll give you an example. Okay. I'll give you an example. This happened to me. It happened to my family quite a few times through the years. Um, and half of my family has gone now. So what, what happened is that I would have one of my brothers, and I've had, had my sister, uh, tell me that they got a phone call from me. Okay? Now, mm-hmm. I never made the phone call. And I looked at my, my call. I looked at my phones and seeing if I, what outgoing calls I made. I looked on my computer, and I, I didn't make the call. But they swore up and down they got a call from me asking me, at, and it was staticky, and it was uh, kind of... Uh, it was it was legible, but it was kind of like snow in the background interference. And I, w- I was asking them how they were doing. How are you? How are you doing? And and my mother, same thing happened to her a few times. Same thing happened to my brother more than once. Same thing happened to my sister. And the same thing happened to my other brother, where they swore up and down. No, it was you. It was you. Calling and asking how they were doing. So these things, these are real. If, if you can think them, they're real. So, But there's powers to be that don't want you to figure that out and know that. So that there are so many versions of you that exist that it, it's, you know, you can't keep track of it. You just can't keep track. It's just, there's just no way. So we all have other versions of us living in mm-hmm. other times. Period. That makes total sense. Yep. It is multidimensional. One more question, if I can, please. Sure. You had mentioned earlier in another call about Agartha and that there are those who could be invited to Agartha in order to assist on a different level with the planet and at the same time that it would be where you wouldn't necessarily be on the surface anymore and just with going into, you know, selected ones who are being asked to assist in a different level. And so could you share any more on that aspect? Um, You know, it's funny because uh, Zora uh, pronounces, (laughs) Zora pronounces Agartha Agartha. Agartha. Without the H, yeah. Yeah, he, without the H. It's, it's, it's Agartha, not Agartha. So him, him being from there, um, I kind of follow that. Okay, so it's Agartha. So Agartha, the, here's a the structure. They have been around for a lot longer than us, okay? So they're, the, the, um, the, also, the beings that, that uh, David Wilcock talks about, the, uh, that, that uh, Corey Good talks about, that he's met, that um, the Kyrie and, and uh, th- that civilization, and, and uh, you know, some of them have uh, necklaces with Saturn, and you know, they're from different planets, but they, they're all together uh, in the in the Earth, uh, beneath the surface of the planet, and when you look at the See, there's all. See, we, 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 humanity. I think we've probably been here. Oh, maybe over hundred thousand years, I guess. Yep. And uh, mm-hmm. you know, we were put here. We didn't come from Earth. We were put here. And uh, Atlanta was Atlantis was supposed to be our care care you know, watch over us. They didn't. Uh, we were then left to the Anunnaki, and then, of course, the Anunnaki started messing with our DNA, started creating all kinds of abominations. Uh, okay. And uh, so anyway, to, to, to get to the, the humanity will be preserved and protected 
from the earth changes, okay? Now, some are going to leave because they've elected to leave. They're higher selves. They're God sparks. So they, you know, some, some humans will leave. They'll leave the body. You know, it's not like everybody is going to be saved. Uh, there will be those who will leave the body. I like that term better than the, than the okay. man-made created terms, leave the body. What are you going to do? I'm getting ready to leave the body. What does that mean? Well, I'm getting ready to leave my body. Eventually, people will understand that and comprehend it. Oh, okay. All right. won't be a big deal. See? And that's part of us reconnecting. But there, there's, there's a, there's, there have been places set up for millions of human beings beneath the surface of the planet. I mean, you know, felt like, I guess the best word for it, you call it condos, I guess you could call them apartments. Uh, and, and they live much differently down there than we do. Right? There's no war, there's no disease, there's no, you know, conflicts and all of that crap that we have on the surface. Drug addiction and all that stuff. And so it's very peaceful, and uh, they've allotted a, a, a areas to bring humans to, to stay down there until the planet uh, rebalances. So, uh, and, you know, it's interesting because some of them are here on the surface helping, assisting. So. Right, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. God bless you, Garrett. God bless you. So do Hello. we? Hello. Hello. I'm wondering if you could help me walk through something. The last call you had a few nights ago, we were discussing that if people did not buy things, and was it not watch TV? What was the other thing? Not. I can't remember. There were two things. If they didn't, if everybody didn't shop and everybody didn't do something, what was it? On the TV. I can't remember. Do you remember? Buy? If everybody quit buying and everybody did something else, what was the something else? Oh, if if people stop watching the TV and they stop buying for a month. Yeah. Here's the deal. Okay. (laughs) This popped into my head. Call me crazy. I'm no guru. I'm a grandma. But it came to me that... Somebody's got to take the lead here because, you know, it's getting crazy making. If that's how simple this thing is, I say September is probably even a bigger buying month than Christmas because all the university kids, I don't know about the states, but in Canada they get the student loans and they go nuts shopping, right? All these kids get all this money and, I mean, it's just like bizarre. The clothes, the booze, the, the, the... the, they get new computers. They, they, it's endless. And the other thing is, my mother told me when I was young, and I always remember this. I mean, my mother was a bride of the 40s, and she lived through the Depression, born in 22. She always said to me, you know, if the women of the world were leading, running the world, there wouldn't be any wars because no mother, no matter what country or grandmother or wife, wants to send their loved one or son or whatever, husband, whatever, to war. And she, I'd always left an impression with me, and I thought, you know, that's absolutely right. No matter which side, whether you're in Russia, you, you know, America, Canada, Germany, I don't care where you are, what woman really wants to have that happen for their son? None. Well, well so, why do you think that the opposing forces – have done everything they can to abolish the feminine energy from the planet. And it's scary how many gals I see here walking around with the old uniform, the head, the baseball cap turned sideways. There's certain things, and there's so many gay women now. I just they're everywhere, and I'm like, oh my god, what happened? Is that what part that is part of? No, what happened was is that, and this goes way back. Okay, this was engineered to break up. The, the, the togetherness of family. Yeah, of family. put the women okay. back to work and split it all up. Yeah, so if you take the women out of the houses, okay, mm-hmm. and you start up a movement 
call it woman's lib. And oh. you have all of these burning their bras and doing all this stuff. And there were a lot of there were a lot of plants in those crowds. Uh huh. I get the whole thing whip, now. Whip up those whip up those women into doing that, and to create Helen Redding, uh, you know, all of this, you know, this this women pride and get them out of the house, break the family unit up so that they no longer are in the house, that they are out there working, entice them with jobs and get them out there and start getting to work. This way we'll make more money off of the masses because we can get the women out of the house and into the workplace. We'll be able to tax that many more people and make that much more money off of them. So that's what they did. They engineered it. It was all engineered very finitely, and then they brought that, and they broke up the American family. They broke up families all across the planet. They, they literally wanted to do it in America because America, again, stands for freedom. So they took all the American housewives, and they, they put them out in the workplace. So, and it's not that right. there weren't women working during World War II because most of the, most of the manufacturing were women in the plants, that they, they were working those, on. You know, they yeah, took the refrigerator they, plants, they took the automobile plants, yeah. and they turned them all over to, to war manufacturing machine plants. Rosie and so, the Riveter. But the, yeah, so what happens is that you get, you get women out of the house, okay? The family unit re, re, uh, disintegrates. It breaks apart, okay? It really does. Latchkey so, kids. The feminine energy, yeah. Yeah. raising children, uh, you know, making the dinners, supplying the nurturing, the love, the caring of a mother's energy, a feminine energy that's, that's there. Now see what they've done is they've kept that constantly because in most cases you've got women working two jobs, trying to support a family. They're stressed out. They're just like the men. They've become just like the men. They're all stressed out. They're worried. Lack of, lack of, lack of. So the children... Can't, it's hard to raise those children the way they used to be raised because of the fact that we've got all this technology, they have got all these games that are all violent, and they're teaching this, this conflict and violence and blowing up and killing and blood and arms flying everywhere. And, and, and that, that keeps the kids busy so that, that the mother never has a rest. She's always stressed out. She's trying to raise a family. She's trying to work a job. And it's just constant. The father is doing the same thing. There's arguments. There's stress. There's friction. Oh, we yes, have so I many- understand that. And McDonald's on the way home, no, who's got time to cook? And who's walking got time in the door to cook? at supper instant, time. Instant society, instant this, pizza night, burgers, all of the bad foods, starts causing physical ailments and problems. When most Americans hit their 50s, they start recognizing physical ailments. All kinds of health issues start cropping up. They get sucked into the allopathic industry and their history. And, and all of these things, they continue to, to, if people would start waking up and start saying, whoa, wait a minute here, uh-uh, no. So that's, you know, all of this comes back together where, where the woman that that feminine energy fills the household with love because there's there the finances are there and the wellness is there and the mm. support is there and the lack of is gone and that can be rekindled and that that's what that's that energy coming in the feminine energy's realigning itself coming in to balance the masculine energy and 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 you can see that now a lot of the uh, you see, this is interesting. A lot of the females that you see in D.C. are not what they appear to be, okay? Some of those people are three-dimensional holograms. Oh, my gosh. Some of them are uh, men to women, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot of things that the American people don't have a clue about or the rest of the planet on who these so-called people really are who they really are because no do do they know does anybody really know who these people no they don't no they don't okay so you you've got you've got uh beings from other planets in dc uh in in the secret service uh you've got them in the fbi you've got them in the cia you've got them in all of the over 83 letter agencies in this country and you've got them sprinkled everywhere they're all over the place. So, you know, the, the American woman has taken one hell of a beating because, you know, think about it. 
why does this country, 80% of the marriages end up in divorce after five to seven years? I understand that. And they only pay then, the women very limited to what they paid the men for the same job. And, you know, there we go. We, 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 it's, this, it's, 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 it's separate and conquer. It's, it's segregate and conquer. It's not integrate. It's segregation. It's causing people. Let's pit them against each other. Let's have them fighting each other. Let's have them envying each other. Let's have them arguing with each other. I've got more than you. You're not getting this because you're this gender and this and that. It's just a constant. It's a big, huge deception game to keep everybody living in that pain area, in that anguish, in that stress. To wake up next day and do it all again. Happiness. Yeah, I get yeah. it. Okay. I get it. But here's my thing. If it's as simple as what you say, which to me it would be, I say everybody get what you need in August, get your food brought in, get your gas in your car, do whatever you got to do, and go on strike September 1 because that the month that they've got so much crap to be sold – don't don't buy all the back to school, back to school clothes, back to school this, that new lunchbox, new this. I mean, it's all it's worse than Christmas. That well, would be a know, that, really that, good that, month to do it, would you think? It's a good idea, but it's getting people to commit. Yeah, that's a problem because not that many people see what we see. Yeah, so you yeah. You, you you know you got to get millions of people committed to Man, doing not that. Not going to happen. Because they're the you, ones that watch the TV and they, they play football and little computer games, so they don't listen to these calls. So what we do is we expand and grow our meditation and make a subliminal change and shift in the actual higher selves of humanity. Because I've tried them all. I've tried every avenue possible. I've tried massive meetings. I've tried get-togethers. Yeah. I've tried town to town, city to city, village to village. Yeah. I've tried mission. every application you could possibly think of, and the only one that keeps coming back is meditation. Yes, I understand that. And, and you know, God bless you for doing what you've done. I'll tell you one thing. I mean, I'm, I'm an old grandma, but I've quit driving my car because our gas is off the wall for prices and I had repairs up the yin yang. I'm doing the taxi now I'm home more. I'm making homemade soup and I'm just dying to get my grandmother and mother's recipe out recipes because I am home so I can bake and cook. And I love to do it. And you know that is actually making my living costs a lot less and I'm much happier. Yes. So I guess my own little way I'm I mean, I, I loved my grandmother's life and my mother's life. Mind you, they didn't have, you know, electric this and that and all the good stuff. I mean, but I'll take the good with the bad. But yeah, that's what I crave. And if more more women do it, maybe that's it. I mean, by the time they, the young moms get the babysitters and the daycare and all that stuff, they're breaking even. Why work? Stay home. That's okay. why we have to. That's why we're working on. Uh, wealth distribution for humanity. Wonderful. Okay, and, well, I'll, I'll butt out because okay. I don't want to hog the call, but you've been terrific, and I thought it was like a great idea, but I see, yeah, so, you know, a 1% of half of the people in the world do it. What's that going to do? Nothing. Yeah. Eventually, though, the meditation, I, I, you're right. One by one, if they come on, then you, one by one, if each one brings one, Maybe it's slow going, but it will hit the point. Is that right? When it hits that point, yep. that's when the flip sure will happen. Sure will. Thank yep. you. You've been you're great. Welcome. Thank you. I appreciate hey, that. Hey, Jared, I have a quick question about what you were just talking about. Sure. And I hadn't even been thinking about it until you brought up about all the gender stuff. Um, I, mean, I was just reading this article where this, some professor was literally saying that the whole concept of gender is hate, like even having gender is hateful. Uh, is, that, is all that gender insanity going to stop at some point? Because it's, it's getting to the point of where it really is just ludicrous. Well, you know, everybody has an opinion, and that's, that's you know, what, a, what, a, what actually what a free society should be about is about their opinions. Yeah. And so if you look at male and female, okay, here's, here's what we look at. We look at what's inside, not what's on the outside. We learn to do that 
there is no gender. All right? It's man-created. So it's to separate. So if you look at male and female, that's the physical spacesuit that they have. All right? It's to entertain the, 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 uh, the third-dimensional experience. So the spirit, the God spark in each one of us is what we respect. So we respect anything that that God spark is housed in. So we respect all females, all women. We respect all men. We honor each other. When you do that, you eliminate this area of gender. It's not about that anymore. It's not emphasized on that anymore. That that spark of God is housed in that body. Therefore, I honor the God, the God within you, the God within me, honors the God within you. That's it. You literally get to the point where you bow to each other when you see each other, and you put your hands together in prayer, and you basically honor each other. When humanity is, gravitates to that level of understanding, we respect each other. We honor each other. It doesn't matter what the, what the, suit, uh, what the, the space suit is. You know? We touch each other uh, spiritually and on a, in a God-existent plane, a father-mother-God plane, a prime source creator God. So, you know, it isn't, it isn't about, you know, hatred and ignorance. It's about what are we? What are we? Who are we? And, we have to, and, and once we understand and comprehend that, then we're not, we're not confused anymore. It's like if I see a bunch of people that might not be what I may not agree what they're doing, I honor them. Because they're part of God. They're part of creation. It's like everything. And you honor a spider. You honor a cricket. You honor a tree. You, you respect all life. And that's harmony. See, that's part of the energy in physics of harmony of all life is respecting each other and knowing our boundaries, honoring one another, loving one another. And that's where... That's where humanity is being guided into that direction. And I'll tell you something. As that vibrational frequency increases, as it spreads across humanity, the lower vibrational frequencies will melt away. They cannot exist. They will be gone. It will be like flash gone. As at each human being that reaches that level enlightenment, of enlightenment, of awareness, of who they are, and what they really are, those lower vibrational frequencies for all of us are gone. The hatred, the ignorance, the, the aggression, uh, the antagonistic attitudes, the separation, the uh, uh, fear, uh, the stress, the anxiety. We, we become peaceful. The higher we rise, the more peace we experience the more happiness we, in, we envelop ourselves in. Because what we're doing is we're reflecting all of the, the eternal love from our God spark inside these bodies outward. That's the key. It's to get it outward. It's to, em, it's, it's to have it emulating outward and, 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 and literally waving out and touching others. And that's what all the prophets have done, the true prophets of this planet have done. When, when, when they walked the planet, they waved it out to people. They touched, each, they touched deeply each spirit within each human. And that's why they were so revered. And they tried to teach humanity, this is you. You can do this. You don't need me. I'm showing you what you're capable and what you can do. And that's how all of this stuff this garbage that we deal with is, is being eliminated. And you can see why it's being, as, as the curtain is pulled back, you're seeing all this craziness take place, unprecedented in this country, unprecedented in this country and across the planet. And if you step back and you look enough, you'll see the craziness that's being expressed amongst those who have taken a different direction of lower vibrational frequency. And as we continue, it will be eliminated. It's, 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 they, can't, they can't continue. 
See, that's I, when I you that's, know. I think that's a good answer to my question. Yeah, yeah, when I was talking about the insanity, I wasn't. I didn't mean you know people having different lifestyles. I meant the insanity of people being so angry at each other over it, and 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 the stuff that you see on the media where it's almost like you have to hate these people because they're different, or you have to hate these people because they because they think different or or whatever. You know, it seems like it's really incited by people in the news media. And when I see you know they'll have the gay group or the this race or that race on TV, all the people always seem so angry and bitter. But, you know, uh, I've had gay friends. I've had, you know, black friends, Hispanic friends, and we always get along, and it's great. You know, I've never met all these hateful people, but you see the insanity that's, that's put on the television. And it just makes me think, you know, wow, are these real people? Or is this, uh, you know, what, what is this that's going on, you know? And watch what happens if you, if you know somebody and you say to them, and they're, and they're somewhat awake, somewhat aware. You see, you know what? I, I'd like to see if you could turn your television off for a week and not watch it. And I've done that with people. I said, I bet you can't do it. Yeah, I cut my cable years ago. I, I cut that off because I realized when I realized how much they were lying to me, I said, I'm not going to pay them to lie to me. So now I exactly. get cable internet and I, and I watch stuff on YouTube uh, yep. and, and, and stuff like that. And I, I've actually gotten to the point now where – uh, you know, my vibration is raised so much that I can't watch some of that stuff. It makes me physically yes. ill. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely on the money about that. I you, see the CNN logo or even the Fox News logo, any of these things. It, it, I get the like, almost sick feeling like, ugh. Yes. Yes. See, you've liberated yourself from the part of the matrix because it, when, when, you, when you let go of the television and you just say, it's in my control and you control it, so you control streaming media and you say, okay, I'll watch this, this is interesting, and you, you literally interact and you learn, you actually learn about other human beings and, you, and it's a learning experience and it's interactive in, in some cases and it's wonderful. It's absolutely phenomenal. And that's well, what one we thing I've noticed that one thing I've noticed about the broadcast media, and I mentioned this to somebody, you know, it doesn't matter if it's CNN, Fox News, whatever, it's all formulaic, it's all the same, it's all like this stale cardboard cutout garbage, and they're all saying the same thing in the same way with the same monotone voice, the same yes. manicured, you know, everything. And I'm like, uh. But then I go on to YouTube, and I see different people, you know, sitting in different environments in their house, yes. out on, in a garden saying different things in different ways, expressing different ideas. And even if I don't agree with it, I love listening to the diversity, the variety, the, yes. just all this stuff. It's, it's so refreshing. I just can't get enough of it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's phenomenal to have that at your fingertips and to cut, your, it cut cable. Uh, uh, Con, um, uh, uh, Comcast has lost, for instance, a large uh, cable company. They've lost over 5 million customers who have cut their cable and are using streaming media through the Internet, um, through their televisions that they used to use to watch all the crap, and they don't do wow. it anymore. Well, so you, you, know can, how you know how threatened that the, that, the, that the powers that be feel because now they're starting to try to ban all these YouTube channels. Yes, uh, yes. Before, before they weren't bothering with them, they let them say whatever they want. But exactly. now that people are starting to get millions of views, and they're like, oh, got to try to ban this, but they can't ban it fast enough. It's out of their control. Yeah, because the viewership is increasing exponentially in that direction away from the mind box, the con mind control box uh, of, of the, the television programming stations and everything where the cable companies dictate to you, well, you know, we're going to raise your bill every year and you're going to do this and you're going to do that. You, you know, you've got to have, you know, you've got to have, no, we don't have to have cable, period. No, you're going to have cable. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have Internet so I can, I can get on, on my box and watch whatever I want, whenever I want. I watch movies. I can watch anything I want. I can watch people talking. I can watch people do-it-yourselfers. I can watch people doing this, doing that. I can interact. I can talk. I can send messages. I can do whatever I want. And it's, and it's, it's liberating and it's freeing when people take their power back. It's just it's not hard. Take well, your power back. Well, think about this. They've, they've so totally brainwashed the masses that people are literally paying them hundreds of dollars a month to be brainwashed. Yes. They're paying Absolutely. them. Absolutely. Like, so not only, not only are they enslaving you, you're paying willingly for that enslavement and, like, asking yes. them to do it. It's, it's horrible. It's absolutely. It's just, you're right. You're on the money. Yep. All yeah. right. Uh, well, I'm done. I just, I just wanted to, to kind of figure that out because – 
uh, you know, it's not that I'm worried about it, but sometimes it's a little bit exasperating when you're just like, come on, you know. Well, you're taking your power back, that's all. Don't they use clones? Uh, Jerry, oh, sure, they Taylor? use clones. Cripe, they use, they've been using clones since, I guess, the, I, they've been using clones since the 70s. So. There you go. Jared, it's Cindy yes. Taylor calling back. Yeah. I want to apologize to everyone listening in. I might have been unmuted a while ago, so if I was making background noise, I want you to know I'm really sorry. I was just eating a salad, so I hope that wasn't me. No, okay. you're fine, Cindy. And also about television, you're going to laugh at this, but I miss Harry Reasoner. <laughs> he used to be on 60 Minutes. I thought Harry Reasoner was a teddy bear. So I don't want to crucify Harry everybody. Yeah. Harry yeah. Reasoner was a real sweetheart. Yeah. It, anyway, maybe the other people listening in don't know who we're talking about, but I thought he had a special way about well, him. Well, there's some people that remember Walter Conkright and uh, Conkright. Chet Huntley, David Brinkley, and, you know, Charles all of the, the when they had black and white television. So. Yeah. Well, I was born in 51, so that's a dead giveaway. You know, I love Lucy. <laughs> I anyway. love Lucy. Yeah, I dream of Janie. Leave it Father to Beaver. Knows best. Andy Griffith. Yeah, yeah. Ozzie and Harriet. All those yeah. old shows. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I'll get off, but I just wanted to make sure I wasn't the one making the noise because you're really okay. strict about that now. Okay. So I'll, I'll get off. Thanks. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. Jared. Yes. It, uh, I'm up here in Canada, and one of the radio stations had a contest. Somebody was going to win, and they did some tickets and in, in entry to the show in Vegas of, if you can get this, Michael Jackson's estate is putting on a Michael Jackson concert. Well, wow. I don't know, but you know what I think is happening? Michael Jackson will be there, but nobody will get it. What do you think? Well, you know, there's... Um there have been a lot of rumors that he staged his death. Um, I heard he didn't die. Yeah, he staged his death, right. and he was at his own funeral dressed up as an old man. Yeah. And that uh, the looks on the faces of the family looking in that direction were priceless because it's on video. And, uh, you know, there, there's, there's, there's a lot of... Uh, just no, nothing similar to Elvis Presley staging his death, okay, mm-hmm. where they put a wax body of him. They had a, a double guy that weighed a lot, more, you know, that weighed heavy duty, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and and they they put uh, a wax body in the casket, and they had to put an air conditioner in there to keep the body from oh uh, melting because it was so hot oh and God. heavy. And uh, so Presley supposedly is alive, and he has made some songs, and he has sung them. He's a real thin guy. He's in his, I think he's in his late 80s. And, um, but he allegedly is a preacher now, uh, and he preaches the gospel in a small community. And he's got mm-hmm. snow white hair and a snow white beard. Nobody and ever there's some striking it. similarities of him. Uh, so there is, you know, there is there is a lot of uh, theories, like on Michael Jackson, and that, you know, he he they were trying to kill him, and he knew it, and so he had to figure out a way to exit, and he exited it and staged it all, and and uh, lives well, a different that's life. Smart thinking. Well, yeah, he gave uh, each of his kids a hundred million. Um, you know, his estate was bought, his, his land, Neverland. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, they bought that. Uh, somebody bought it. And so he's, uh, he's a guy that uh, could still be living. Anything's possible for the most well, part. And I, I think found that, it very uh, interesting because I think that's about the end of October. And, of course, whoever won these tickets won the entrance to the, the special group in the back, whatever you call that, I don't know, special little party thing. And, and it's like, you know, I'm thinking Michael Jackson just saying, guess what, you guys, because it's safe to come out. Just like you said, you couldn't have done this call a year ago. 
Well, yeah, I don't so think Michael if, Jackson if, could do well a year a year ago. But could, you know what? If that's he really might, happening, that's a good he time. Might, you know, a Michael Jackson concert, and yep. he comes out and he announces himself, very well huh. could be. Uh, well, hey, listen, I just got creative thinking, but it just hit me like, you know what? Things are looking good if these guys can come right back out because you can. You well, it's just like it's just like JFK Jr. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's there's a lot of strange things that have gone on that people are now starting to pick up and start identifying. So, before they it would have slept you know slipped under the carpet, but there have been a lot of strange things through the decades that have occurred that the the public has no clue on. They just don't even know. Well, whatever some of they're the told, that, they buy it. Pretty much, pretty much. I think that's shifted, though. I think now people are saying, I'm not buying that anymore. It's too redundant, the same thing over and over again. It's like a broken record. All these false flags, all this staging going on, green screens, FX, CGI. It's just, you know, it's, you know, the news, the news creates things on purpose to entertain the public. That's it keep them off the target but you know what i've heard that the same people were at the boston thing which were at the school oh actors yeah they're yeah, paid but actors. They're, the same faces are getting seen in eight or ten of these different problems well what does that's, that tell you that's how stupid they believe the public is yeah hmm. they won't anyway, realize or re- they won't recognize all of that at all so. no no and the last um, thing i want to say is you forgot ed sullivan when he had the Beatles one night, fresh yes. in North America. Do you remember yes. that one? Yeah. Yes. And also, Ed Sullivan, uh, when Elvis Presley came on his show, they wanted to make sure that the camera didn't go below the waist because of the gyrations <laughs> that Elvis used. Oh, on I'm dancing. sure. And what about Johnny Carson and his sidekick? I mean, that was a classic. Ed but McMahon, yep. Nobody would know what we're talking about, but that's it. I'm done. Yep, okay. Did, uh, did John Lennon really get killed, do you know? John Lennon. New York. Yeah. Beatles. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, they uh, Now, Paul McCartney is alive, but the real Paul McCartney left the band. Oh, I didn't know that, really. They had a lookalike step in. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, Lennon... Uh, Lennon did he he was he was taken out yeah oh okay yeah thank you for knowing that and revealing that thanks yeah yeah hello Next. hello Jared hello yes. hello hi hi um I, I'm Crystal from Northern California um hi I have hi um this is something I wanted to know for a really long time about five years ago or 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 more. I just noticed that people were, um, you know, not returning calls anymore and um, uh, doing more texting. And then uh, it got to the point, and I started, I was really irritated because I'd have to call somebody, you know, even family members, um, like, you know, three or four times before they call you back. And then so it it made me mad for a long time but then I caught the disease and then now I don't want to talk to anybody and um I have like a list of people that I haven't called for like a year and it gets longer and longer and I I look at the list and I go I really need to call this person and then I just can't I just don't want to I can't call them and um, then I and then some people that used to call me that I've known like for 30 years that would always call at least like once a month just to say hi and catch up. They don't call anymore. And then I call them and and you know just to see if they're still alive. And then everything's fine. But they just every, well okay. So the thing is nobody calls each other and then they'll text. But that's it. Is there something that they're putting out in, like, the airwaves that makes people not want to talk to each other? <laughs> the um, microwave towers uh, and the satellite energy being beamed into the atmosphere uh, causes people to become lethargic and ah. demotiv- 
demotivated. Uh, okay. it, it takes away their, um, I don't know how you put it, fortitude, uh, motivation to do things. Uh, they become more lethargic, more, you know, laying away from things, not wanting to get things done, uh, become more uh, complacent. Uh, the energy waves, you know, change the brainwave patterns. Uh, and, you know, these, the microwave energy, the cell towers, the... Uh, and the antidepressants probably too. Yeah, the antidepressants, you, you, you've got, you know, the human body's being bombarded, uh, and people, all people have to do is go out there and research this, but it's being bombarded from every avenue, every angle, every direction possible. Uh, and on, as I tell people, is that whatever you, you know, and this is very true, whatever you put on the skin, okay, unless it's designed not to go into the skin or bloodstream, but whatever you put on the skin goes into your bloodstream immediately. It goes right into the bloodstream. Anything. You know, that's, that's why I've, I've often said to, uh, and I used to, you know, years ago I used to model, and I, uh, the, the makeup and, and things that, uh, that, that women put on their face, uh, and they're around their eyes and um, basically on their bodies, the different lotions and everything, they're uh, going right into the bloodstream. So whatever the chemicals are on the back of that label, whatever they are, and most people don't understand what they are, so they should research them, but those chemicals are going into the bloodstream of the human body. They're being distributed into the organs and the liver and the kidneys and the heart and the spleen and the arteries and all the tissues. And it's just, it, it, and, then, and then the water is so polluted in this country that we don't drink it out of the tap anymore like we did back in the 60s. We, we buy it in bottles. And then we pay water bills on water that we take a shower in that we're afraid to drink. It's crazy. <laughs> we're afraid to drink it. But I go, well, okay, so if you don't drink your tap water, you take a shower in it. Well, I never thought of that. Well, you're taking a shower in it, and it's still going into your bloodstream. In fact, a lot of it's going into the bloodstream because you're taking a shower. And you're taking a hot shower, which is opening up all your pores on your body, and it's all going right in there, period. So, it, you know, it's, it's, uh, and, and most filters won't take up fluoride. Fluoridic acid. The, the, the fluoride is a, is a different construct that they're putting in the water. It's at, they have to wear hazmat suits to put this stuff in the water because it is so caustic. And they're putting it in the, in the, in the U.S. water system. And so people, people are taking showers and this stuff, and unless you get a really good filter that costs you an arm and a leg to put up there, you're, you're literally bathing in poison. Yeah, and you it, mean it, re- reverse osmosis? Yeah, you know, you, you, you would have to have a, a reverse osmosis system, uh, a whole house reverse osmosis system. You'd probably right. have to have well water, and you'd have to have holding tanks. And, and I, you know, I've talked with these water companies. You know, they sell bottled water, and they distribute it, local ones around the world. And, and I've talked to them out in Colorado and different other places. And I've been on the tours of these, these facilities, and every one of them have told me this. You know, it doesn't matter what's in the water. Because we can take all that out, distill it, and then put back good nutrients back in the water and then use it, you know, throughout the house. And so, you know, you have a, you have a well, a well system, which they tried to get everybody away from, and you go on city water and stuff, and that's all chemicalized. And, it, you know, it's horrible. So it goes on and on and on, and it's just inter, interlinked and interconnected. It's like most Americans don't know this, but it's like don't drink your water and don't bathe in it because it's so polluted. Well, we got to change that, and we have to go to these municipalities and these, these water concerns because they've been selling off water rights to these private corporations owned by the families that will be able to tell everybody that you, you can't have water like they did out in California not too long ago. Well, you're not going to be able to use it down there. We're going to fine you five, $600. They're the ones that are creating the shortage, but yet they're finding people to make more money off of the, off of the populace by threatening them and creating fear uh, that you can't water your lawn or you can't go, you can't only flush the toilet this many times and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, that, that, that water was created by source creation for this planet and, to, and for this planet to provide humanity. We have an overflowing abundance of water, literally. 
and, and we can take it out of the atmosphere. We've got the technology. We can just absorb it out of the atmosphere. We can create it. We can cause it to rain in California tomorrow. We can have it raining and soaking the whole uh, northern part of California, the southern part, all the grape uh, or, uh, fields, all the fruit and nut areas and vegetables, and have it just vibrant and green. We can turn all the deserts on this planet into green, lush uh, areas of planet Earth. We don't need deserts. We don't need them. Don't need them. So, you know, we could change a lot of things with this technology. Fun. And we're going to have it. We will have it. Okay, but I'm just confused about one thing, though, because why, if this wave thing with the galactic wave from the creator is coming, then, and then people are going to different planets, why do we need that money in, in the whole pro- prosperity thing if, if that's happening and half of people won't be here. So I'm confused about that part. Well, like there's going to be a certain, certain there's going to be a certain amount of humanity that will exist and, and prosper and grow. Okay, there will be others that will leave their bodies and move on. Okay, mm-hmm. and if you understand vibrational yep, frequency, I, if, if a vibrational I, frequency goes at a certain level, the the image that you're witnessing disappears, okay? It no longer is there that you can see it with your senses as a human being. So it's just like if you understand vibrational frequency, if a, if a wood table that you can put your feet on and you say, this is solid, okay, the trickery there is that it's not solid, okay? It's the molecules vibrate at a much lower vibration so it appears solid okay now the higher your vibrational frequency the more you transcend your your body the one that you have right now is a carbon-based body body. that exists in a vibrational frequency of third dimensional energy that's transitioning from fourth to fifth So as you transition to a higher vibrational frequency, your body is going to change. It is. It's just you can't because of the molecular structure of it. Well, it already has. It already has somewhat. Yeah. So, you know, you are changing, and a lot of humanity is changing. And some of it's subtle. Some of the things are subtle. People's hearing, people's intuition, people's psychic abilities, people's uh, uh, awareness, um, clairvoyance, uh, different abilities that are starting to get clearer, stronger, that might have just been whispers in the beginning are expanding and growing. And these things will continue. And they'll continue to rise and rise and rise. And, you know, people, and, and it won't be unusual to see people floating around, literally floating. Just, you know, you want to float, you float. You know, cross your legs and float around. And, there, and there, there, there are some people that have been doing that for years already, but this is going to be more widespread where people will be able to uh, manipulate gravity. They'll be able to levitate things themselves, uh, you know, uh, different items, different things of weight. Uh, they'll be able to, their vision, all of a sudden they could be blind, and then all of a sudden their vision is totally acute, and, and it becomes very strong, very powerful. Uh, you know, they're many things. They're, they're tactile, they're feel, uh, their emotions, uh, their uh, different, different abilities, some that they could never imagine having that will start appearing, you know. So. Okay. Thank you so much. And thank You're you. You're welcome. I do, I do the meditation every day, and it's, I did it to change the world, but it's changed me. So. Wonderful. I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. Wonderful. Hello, Jared. Hi. Hello. Uh, I want to go a little bit into the water. A lot of people don't realize it, but there are things put into the plastic bottles that we buy um, that are to sort of calm down the human race. And another thing that it's been doing is all these bo- all this bottled water with some of the things that they do add to it that they shouldn't be adding to it uh, also causes... Uh, a slight sterilization in men. Uh, years ago, they used to be able to get women pregnant rapidly, and now at the time, yeah, yeah it, and it, it's from that. 
and the Nestle company is the one who made a deal with the lady, the, pre, uh, the president, the, um, the governor of Michigan to oh, go yeah, up to... Oh, yeah, they water out of Lake Michigan. Oh, yeah. yeah. Out yeah. of the aqua... they right to the aquifer, and they got eight to ten foot fences all the way around it. Yeah. So, and we live in Florida, so five years ago, we had our water tested for um, everything, and especially the Roundup. And the, we, the water we had tested, the Roundup came back very, very high. Now, this is five years ago, and since then, they've really gone nuts with the growth. Yeah. And the only, what I had done is I, I went ahead and I bought a product called Zero Water Filter, and it's a five-stage filter. You can put it in your refrigerator. You can put it on your countertop. And I took a bottle of that and sent it with the other bottle. And they came back and said it was the purest water they could find, and there was no Roundup in it. Unfortunately, they don't make shower heads, and we are on a well. But anybody wanting to get away from those plastic bottles and do not freeze them and then drink the water out of them, it's very, very unhealthy for you. So they, these are just some of the things that I've found all the years that we've been in, in nutraceuticals. Uh, I've got two quick questions for you. Um, I, you refer to mother and father God. Are you referring to them as being the same being or two different entities? Feminine and masculine. In, in one being or two separate beings? No, two separate entities. Oh, two separate. Okay. And where does Mother Asana and and Mother or Mother Asana and Mother Earth come in? Are they really tied into Gaia, or are they tied into the feminine part of the the Godhead? Mother Earth is Gaia. Okay. Okay. Just another name for Gaia. Earth, mm-hmm. Gaia, Mother Earth, uh, and the. Um, what was the other one you said? Uh, Mother Asana. Uh, Sylvia Brown used that term. Yeah, that d- different depictions of Earth energy. Okay, okay. Because what I see is when I do re- when I've done some readings and different things, I see more pe- of people's totems, and I also see uh, a, a lot of Indian guides. Although I have seen other guides when I have done this, um, but my my energies with the animals is extremely high, and my youngest daughter lives in a boat down in Key Largo, and the dolphins and the manatee and everything come and play around her boat because she's she's such a gentle soul, and they know that she loves her loves them, and I have actually sand cranes that will come and visit me. And I had a single male out here, and he didn't have he didn't have a mate. I told him there's a single there's a single mate down by the church. And the next time he came back, he brought her with him. It was just really funny. So there's there's sort of you can feel the connection there. But I I have for all my entire life I've drawn energy from the animals and from Mother Earth. So it, it, it we're we're all I guess we're all developing on a different level. Yeah, and I want to thank right. thank you you're for right. everything you do. Oh, you're welcome. It's my pleasure. Have a great evening. Good night. Thank you, you too. Good night. Jared, I yes? heard that the agent, um, uh, wait a minute, no, the Roundup is actually Agent Orange. Is that true? Part of the, yeah, part of the fertilizers, it's glyphosate and some of the others are, uh, they're still using Agent Orange and they're spraying it on uh, vegetation uh, and they're spraying it in the sky and yeah, they've been using Agent Orange for years and years and years. Yeah. Okay. And see, the part, this whole process is to kill off humanity, okay, where they don't know that's happening, so they're oblivious to it. Well, they think so, they're spraying you know, their they, weeds on their garden, but they're killing themselves. And if they only would take raw vinegar and mix, and, and mix it, you know, with a little bit of water and spray that on their weeds, they'd kill the weeds naturally, period. Yeah, they're not it's alkaline. It's alkaline and it helps the soil, and uh, but uh, you know that that's it's part of the destruction of the human race. The water, the air, the soil, the food, the the microwave towers, 
the sending units for uh, 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 5G, 6G, 7G, 8G, 9G, 10G, gradualization going up and up and up and up the ladder. You know, people don't know this, but they've been engineering this stuff for so long, and it's an open book. It's been revealed. You know, they've got 20K television, okay, that's already been developed. You know, they've got, it's just a joke, you know, and they charge everybody an arm and a leg for this stuff, and it's just so ridiculous. And it's all about raping and pillaging the human race. That's it. We provide them with wealth and servitude. That's it. That's what they, you know, and that's all, that's all they believe that the human race is worth. Hmm. Okay. There's, well, other, there's okay. other, other beliefs that they want to uh, destroy. They call us the fifth root race. And they want us to be obliterated so they can bring in the sixth root race. And they bring in the sixth root race. And they only want 20 million on the planet to serve them as total slaves. Eat goop out of a bowl and wear overalls. And that's pretty much it. Work the jobs that they want us to serve them on. And that's it. And they control all the wealth, have all the wealth. And the planet, pretty much the surface of the planet is toast. Wow. So, you know, that's, that's their, that's what they are doing. That's what they want. See, this crap in California, trying to bake Northern California, destroy the food supply, cause America to go into riots because there's not enough food to feed the people. I mean, Mm -hmm. water shortages, all this stuff's being engineered so that it can cause the public to just fall apart and to go into total disarray. Then they could grab everybody, throw them into cages, and gas them. That's it. Oh, my God. Yeah. And you know all that California fruit and veggies uh, that serves up here in Western Canada, that's where we get it. Sure. All trucked up here. One last thing. The water table, I, I need a clarification. There's the water table and there is the aquifer. Can you explain, is the water table above the, can you lay that out for me, please? Aquifer is underground, okay? Okay. Right. And it's water that runs underneath, under the ground. It's different <laughs> springs, natural springs, and, and, and the rivers and streams and uh, huge lakes and vast oceans underground. That's the aquifer. So if you take, if you have a, like wells and stuff and you're drawing, because all of these municipalities draw their water from wells, okay? So they draw the wells and draw the wells. Well, after a while, the wells get exhausted because there's so much consumption of the water in the area by drying up everything and causing it to evaporate up into the atmosphere rather than taking it back out of the atmosphere, putting it back down in the aquifers, they cause it to be moved elsewhere. So they literally dry up the area. The aquifer gets exhausted, so there's no water to draw up to the surface. So there's no surface water, okay? So if you, it's like they've got, um, what do you call them, uh, reservoirs that they, you know, draw water out of. And, and the reservoirs are usually man-made, and they pump the water in there from the aquifers. And so the reservoirs start going down, and they're using so much of the aquifer, the, the, the in-ground water sources, that they drain that area. They exhaust the wells. And there's no more water to be had because they've dried up the water source coming down. Because usually the aquifers fill up from the rain that comes down. That's the natural order of things. Rain comes down, starts washing in, fills in the lakes and the streams, and goes into the ground. And the ground that drips down into the wells and the aquifers. Well, when you create a drought and you engineer the drought, you dry up the aquifers. The wells dry up. You don't have any wells. And so you drain the aquifers and divert. A lot of the times they're diverting water out of one area and putting it to another far away from that area. So they're depleting the water source and the aquifers on purpose. They're rerouting it. Okay? So when that happens, people get, they get short on water. And all of a sudden there's not enough water, and they're alarming the people, and they're saying there's lack of water. And so, you know, come on. They're charging people ridiculous amounts of money for bottled water, okay? Really, yeah. It's and a it huge business. It's in the sun at the gas station all day long. It's a multi-billion dollar business. You know, and how idiotic is it that the, that the human race doesn't say, hold on a second, we got to fix our water system, and you guys are all criminals, and you're all fired. You're out of here. You're done, okay? It's common sense. They're, they're poisoning the water so that they can control it 
so that they can force you to pay for it. They've even talked about taxing the water, having a water tax, because they've been able to convince everybody that we're running out of water on the planet, so you're gonna, we're going to have to create a water tax on your water consumption. Okay? Just like, what I to do just like taxing the Internet. Just, it, it's wherever they can draw and impoverish the people and, and make them fearful and stressed out and cowering in fear forever. Period. They just laid down and took it for thousands of years. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So Give the them water some money. Table, you know. Oh, yeah. sorry. The water table is separate from the aquifer. Is that correct? The, like, water ta- the water table is how deep the aquifers are. Okay. okay. That's the water table. How high are the aquifers? How deep are they? How plentiful are the aquifers? That's the water table in the aquifers. All right. When the water table drops, the water disappears, and there's not enough, and it dries out. So the big buildings are digging here, I don't know, 50, 60 feet down because they're going to be very high towers. With not a drop in there is proof that the aquifer is in bad shape. Is that correct? Correct. So when you, let's look at it this way. There was a time in this country where you could go out and dig a shallow well, all right? And you could literally go out there and you could dig maybe, you know, yeah. five, ten, fifteen. did two of them. Yeah, 15, 20 feet, and boom, you get you hit water, starts gushing in, and it starts filling up. And we'd and that's pump what it with people the did. pumper thing. Yeah, people did that years ago in this country, and they dug their own wells. They didn't have to go down 50, 100, 200, sometimes no, 300 feet, and spend $25,000 to have professionals come out and dig a well if they get approval and they get licensing to do so on their own property. So, you know, it, it, like out in Colorado, you can dig one well, Every 35 acres. That's it. So mm-hmm. one well per 35 acres. So, mm-hmm. you know, the, the different water, and I've talked with water attorneys in different parts of the country, and there's unbelievable amount of legislation on water and water rights and what you can and can't do. And it's about educating yourselves and understanding how this all works. Water is a free thing. It was never meant, it was provided by this planet to nurture us and to, and to hydrate us and to keep us alive. It, it, do animals pay for water? No. The humans pay for water. It's silly. And, and water is plentiful. So, but when they control it, it's, it's all of a sudden starts disappearing. It becomes expensive. And you, they control it. And they put legislation out there to license and control and penalize if you don't follow their direction on oh, your yeah. consumption of water. That's right. Here, um, right now, it's very, very dry. Only the, the even people, if your address is an even number, you can water uh, Wednesday and Saturday. If it's an odd number, Thursday and Sunday. And they're talking can, about cutting I, that out. So nobody can water... So their gardens will die, their flowers will die. Of course, the grass is all all bleached out right now. In the summer, we have no greenery in our grass, but in the winter, it's really green. And it's the opposite in, like, the cold climates, so like back in Toronto area, lovely and green in the summer, but it's just torched in the winter because of the cold. We can, if, if we didn't have to contend with the baddies, we mm-hmm. could go to parts of the world we could go, okay, we, we've got our town is parched and our water tables dropped down. Within three hours, we could create rainstorm. And we could create a soaking rain that would rain for five, six, seven hours, eight, nine, ten hours. And they've done Literally. the opposite. There's no rain anywhere, so they're doing the reverse. So the so they you've still got some power. They literally take away low-pressure systems and dispel them and keep high-pressure systems in place so they create an arid air and they dry up the soil and all the water evaporates and they pull it away. The high pressure pulls it out. It does it. The low pressure keeps the, the, the moisture there and causes the you know rain and everything. When that low pressure system is not there and they keep these high pressure systems in there. That's why all these storms, you'll see them on the horizon, these dark clouds come in and all of a sudden they just dissipate and disappear. Never does rain. Because it's well, all dry. You. It's so dry. And and that see now I'm gonna tell you something. There is a uh, a civilization on this planet 
that are from other planets, uh, from the, their beings from another planet. They they literally want to ch- terraform Earth and kill us all off so they can live here without oh, us. Oh, God. Like kicking you out of your house so they can move in. Yeah, yeah. So well, Obviously, they still have a little power if it's like this. Like We all think that they're going away and it's just about cleaned up, but, I mean, the weather is proving it's not. Am I correct? Well, I'll tell you. It seems, it seems, it appears, as they would like to portray, that they're still in control, but they're not. It does not mean that they've lost all power, but they're not in control anymore. And the reason that is is because, I'll tell you right now, if they were in full power, you and I would be gone. Right. We wouldn't be speaking out like this. No, we wouldn't be talking. So but why, are the, why are the good guys just letting... Oh, this is my last thing in the mouth. Why are the good guys letting them parch this whole continent out? Why are they letting them do it? What? Why are they what? You said they're not really in power, but they seem to be parching the whole continent out, making the gr- the the gr- ground crack. Why would the good guys let them get away with that? There, there's so much busyness going on. There are so many priorities taking place. Now, if you knew that you had a technology that would reverse the damage that they have done in a matter of days and weeks, mm-hmm. would that be a priority right away? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Well, thank you. I, I didn't yeah. mean to hog it out, but okay. I find this so interesting. Thank you very much. Yeah. Bye. Mr. Rand, there's going to be a water project uh, available to everyone. It's structured water. It is the best. So that's oh, coming your water, way, absolutely. people. Yeah. Absolutely. Structured water. Yeah. Jared, Karen here in California. And so talking about the water with, like, Northern California, the utilities are controlled by the Rothschilds. And so they have just enacted a law that makes it prohibitive to do any welling, drilling, for any of the primary water. And our primary water, as you know, is like six times the amount under the ground that there is in the ocean. That's sure. where we get, like, with Mount St. Helen, with Lake Tahoe, you know, anywhere there's vents that bring it up. That's what actually replenishes even the aquifers. And so they've made it against the law to even drill for primary water. And so it's just, you know, you know, we've got the controllers still in place. And so just wanted to make that comment. But another one, just on the other level, what we were talking about with the crazies and sure. the Mandela effect. And so, like, you're talking about the Mandela effect here, and it's like Nelson Mandela. He died in prison, but he didn't. He lived, and he became president for years, just like with Muhammad Ali. He actually died in 2013. You know, but they're saying 2016. And then you look, and this is what I want to talk to you about, is the craziness even of the Mandela. It is changing the text right out of your personal Bibles. You look at chick fil it's now spelled different. You see, you know, product names, just like Febreze. You know, it depends. Things that have been with you for decades are being changed right in front of your eyes. And it's just another effect of the craziness that's going on. Is that coming from CERN? I know it's a parallel universe. And you look at people and they just don't even get it. You know, they've seen, like, Depends with his family. Talks of Depends has been in the home for decades, used by the mother. And it changes right on the box, and nobody pays any attention to it. You know, you bring it to their attention, and it's like either you're awake, you pay attention to what's going on, but the Mandela effect is another one of the crazies going on. Is that coming from CERN? What is your take on the Mandela? Well, here's the direction, okay? We, as a whole, okay, we as the liberators of planet Earth and humanity, our direction and energies are focused on literally elevating humanity out of this prison, okay? The, the, The intensity by the different families, the Rothschilds, Warburgs, and the rest of them, are to keep us subdued and suppressed and, and stuck in the prison. What, that's not happening, so they want to hold on tighter as we slip away. 
And that's what you're seeing here in this whole process, this whole the Mandela effect, CERN, creating the God particle and all this arrogance that these, these people have. You know, exactly. they honestly believe that they can, they literally can beat our creator, that they can win. It's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Uh, on, you know, on, on the bright side of things, we're moving. We're elevating. We're advancing. They're getting more active because of the fact, and they're just showing themselves out in broad daylight because of the fact that it's no longer uh, in their power to control humanity. And so that, that's why they're gripping tighter. That's why they're creating more fear and frustration. That's why they're trying to use, and if you'll notice, they use the same old, same old, same old, period. Exactly. And I'll tell you something. When these people are together, they inbreed. They keep it in the family. There's incest. These people are all related. They all do the same thing. They all literally keep everything in the family. So what happens is that they atrophy. They lose abilities. They don't think so. They're promised by their Lord Master, Lucifer, that tells them, oh, you know, you're going to be fine, you're going to be immortal. And it's all lies, you know. It's basically lies. And so what happens is, is that these people believe all this crap, and they think they're, they're going to live forever in those physical bodies, and they don't. And what happens is, is that they think that they have the right to own and operate and run everything and have us as slaves. And it's not, gonna, it's not that way anymore. It's, it's, it's literally disintegrating, and they're, they're fighting. And, in fact, they're infighting. And some of them are saying, some of the younger ones are sitting there saying, I don't want to destroy this planet. I'm not like you guys. I don't want to destroy this planet. So they're sitting there and they're telling some of, some of the other ones, they're saying, no, that's not going to happen. So you're getting splinters, you're getting, you're getting a, a separation of the families, you're getting people arguing. They're not, here's, let's put it this way. It, and and, and they see, that they, they're losing, and they've lost a tremendous amount of ground. And so what's happened is, is that they don't want to lose their slaves. See, they don't want to lose their power. They don't want to use their, lose their wealth. So that's why anybody who has wealth other than them, they stop from getting it out to the people. They stop it. They that's literally what Jared, the yeah. but Jared, Jared, um, yeah. are, those, are those families the same as, as the off-worlders you, you spoke of earlier and said we're trying to terraform? Or are we up against different baddies or just one big group of baddies? Well, you're, it's a mix. It's a mix, okay? The overlords are not from planet Earth, okay? Right. The human minions are trying to, to take control of the planet because their overlords have been expelled. Okay. So, so the so, overlords so... are no longer in place. So all the lieutenants and, and the 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 sergeants and lieutenants and captains are trying to, 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 to trying to get the power and run it themselves. You can see the mess that, they're making. Is that the Black Pope? Oh yeah, you, you know that's a whole other story. We could we could uh, we could go into that for hours. The uh, you know what the Vatican really is and what you know you know what it's about and you know what they're really representing and what they're really worshiping and. You know, it's a big lie at the Vatican. It's an absolute, absolute lie. Everything they portrayed is a lie. They, they've covered it up. The, the, the real truth is going to freak everybody out, you know. Did you, did you see the big Baphomet statue at Little Rock today? The what? The Baphomet. They, they, re, they revealed a Baphomet statue in, uh, in Little Rock at the Capitol building today. That was in the... Real news. They revealed what? Baphomet, the satanic statue in Little Rock, Arkansas. Oh, yeah, the, the yeah, the, the, the basically Luciferian Luciferian worship, black arts and magic is is uh, is literally goes on at the Vatican. That's what that's what there are. That's why they have a black pope. That's why they have a great pope. They're all, in fact, all priests are actually, and a better way to put it, they're military agents for the Vatican across the planet. So they're all militarized, 
and people don't know this. It's just, it's, it's, this is all being exposed. This, all of this is being exposed. You know, well, any, I mean, any crimes to humanity, they should be arrested and put in prison. Yeah, and see, it's and so humanity. a lot of their assets are being confiscated also. It's their assets are being confiscated. Yeah. Yep. See, let's put yeah. it this way, guys. The human race has been dealt a horrible hand in the card game forever, okay? That's why, you know, do you, you, you honestly think that poverty should exist on this planet? Do you honestly think that people should be dying of all these diseases on this planet? Do you think that they should be suffering, stressed out, de- you know, deteriorating and, and scraping for bones and something to keep themselves alive? That's all been created by these entities, these energies, these beings. You know, we want to change it, Mr. Rand. That's right. That's what we're doing. We're, we're going to literally eliminate all of this, and the human race is going to be set free, period, and all of it, no matter how arrogant they are still, no matter what they're dreaming up, no matter what their game plan is, because we know them all, every single one of them, head to toe, inside and out. So the fact of the matter is that the human race is going to be set free. All the wealth, yeah, all the wealth is going to be transferred to humanity, and it's going to be astronomical, and 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 it is literally going to flood humanity with wealth. Forget about economies, forget about all this crap, forget about uh, gross product, forget about it. It's all their construct. It's all of it, every bit of it. It's all theirs. It's not ours. They put us in it. They tricked us. Okay. All the governments are theirs. All the financial institutions are theirs. All the banks are theirs. It's, you know, this is all the big scam. This has been going on long enough. The fact of the matter is, is that we will receive, controlled by our creator and distributed by our creator through a handful of humanity out to the entire planet of all the inhabitants of the planet and the wealth will literally set humanity free. We will have all, then all the technologies will flood in. They will be nonstop. We will start building. We will stop, start refurbishing. Rand, when, when will this happen, Mr. Rent? How soon? Because we have been the victims enslaved and just going through so much waiting. And we are in the meditation and truly, truly it has been a blessing. So how soon will all of this take place? Because I'm really excited with the call tonight. Thank you. This exchange will give us the power to change things, Mr. Rand. This, That's exactly this exchange. Right. Actually, it, it's it's a release of, of wealth to the human race. That's it. But this we'll, is the we'll, we'll, we'll have, we'll have to in. I know, but yeah. that gives us the power to change things. Without that wealth in our hands, we don't have any power. Oh, well, the power! Believe it or not, we got a plenty of power, and we're doing it right now through the meditations. The you got to remember that you can't rely on on created wealth. I'm talking about uh, the, the Creator's wealth that is being delivered to the human race, okay, mm-hmm. without obstruction, and that's getting ready to happen. It's not it's not something that's a figment of someone's imagination. It is above all of this man-made created stuff. Okay, so that's why it gets confusing. That's why people get confused. That's why they start going, oh, well, you know, okay, what's this one and what's this one? So, uh, but we, we, can, we can go on and on and on, but we're, we're, at home, we're, over one, we're at 1 o'clock. So what we'll do is we'll have another call. We'll have another call on Wednesday of next week, and we'll continue this because I think, it, I think people are hungry that they need as much information as they can get. And so... Uh, I, I'm I'm working around to get the time allotted to get that. So we'll do a call uh, next Wednesday uh, at nine, and we'll continue this. And wish everybody a good morning and a good day. And we'll see most of you at the meditation. And bless you all, and thank you for coming. And thank you, Jared. Thank you. Blessings Blessings to all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rand. We love you. God bless each and every one of us. And God bless you, Jared. United we stand. Spread the word. Get on to 3 o'clock. Love to all.